It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Stacy's here, Jeff's here, Aunt Pruitt's here. We will talk about the Lapsus Extortion Group. They've hacked NVIDIA and Samsung, Microsoft, Okta, and apparently it's a 16-year-old living in his mother's house in Oxford, England. We'll also say goodbye to a couple of computer pioneers, take a look at South by Southwest, and Stacy has a review of the new Eero Pro 6E. It's all coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twig. This is Twig. This week in Google, episode 656, recorded Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. The ultimate ungulate. This week in Google is brought to you by Code Academy. Join over 50 million people learning to code with Code Academy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to codecademy.com and use the promo code TWIG. And by New Relic. That next middle of the night call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does, and you can get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free per month forever. No credit card required. Sign up at newrelic.com slash twig. And by Wealthfront. To start building your wealth and get your first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show we cover the latest news from the Google-verse with Stacy Higginbotham of StacyOnIoT.com. Hello, Stacy. Hello, y'all. You're wearing a lovely scarf in a configured in a stylish fashion, and you're just really right upstaging now, us in many ways. It looks good. No, no, it looks great. There we go. Thank you, Miss Marple. Also uh, with us... <laughs> Only Jeff got that one. Also with us, I'm an Pru old detective. <laughs> oh yeah, I did get it. <laughs> I used to read Ellery Queen. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think it was Agatha Christie, but close. Uh, Anthony uh, Pruitt is here from Hands On Photography. Yay. He's got his granny glasses on too. Can't see you today. Nice. Don't know why. Did you get your uh, pupils dilated? No, no. Just some days I wake up and I'm like, I, I can't, can't see. see. So it's I, I know what it is. It's allergies. It's a peak. Peak allergies. Oh, right it is now. spring it is. again. Spring is here. As somebody said on Reddit, enjoy the enjoy the green hills. They'll be death deathly brown in about eight weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking like they're just dying. Also with us, the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig, Craig, Craig Newmark. Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York, the ever tuneful Jeff Jarvis. Hello, Jeff. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. I bring sad tidings. Yeah. Today at uh, one o'clock, just uh, an hour ago, we learned of the passing of the man who created the GIF. And you know what? I'm going to call it the GIF in his honor. Here is a tribute. He, uh, Steve Wilhite won a, le oh, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Webbies a couple of years ago. Here is David Karp of Tumblr to present that award with a, a look back at some famous GIFs. There's a peanut butter jelly time. The dancing baby from Ally McBeal. See if you can identify all of them. Everybody's website had the under construction GIF, Netscape, oh, American Netscape, Flag, Navigator. Netscape, Tomatoes. I don't know what that is. Crying Guy, Baby with an Ice Cream Cone, the uh, mascot that falls on his face, <laughs> Orson Welles applauding, and Citizen Kane, the deal with it dog. I don't, I don't know what to call that. That's David Robinson. Getting st stood up. <laughs> uh, these are all, so many famous animated GIFs. The GIF is not inherently animated. It can be a still image. It was often used on the web as a still image, but it was, I remember, I'll never forget it, seeing my first animated GIF in Netscape Navigator. When, the, mm. when it first oh. came out, it had that rotating compass. There he is, Stephen Wilhite. He's going to get up. Uh, we'll give a little bit of his, of his speech because he says something pretty important. This year's Webby for Lifetime Achievement, Steve Wilhite. 
God, he's so young. Yeah. Uh, what year was this? I think it's two years ago, believe it or not. I don't think it's too long. Wow. No way. No, you think it? No. You think it's... Uh, Will Height passed away earlier today of COVID, complications from COVID at the oh, age of 74. No. Oh, no. I know. Still. People wear your damn masks yeah, around people. Yeah, get your boosters. Oh, oh, so ridiculous. And uh, I have one of those spring awards as well. Those springy little babies. Babies. Standing O from a crowd who never knew a world without a GIF. Right. He's got five words. Uh, instead of speaking his five words tonight, Steve is using his own invention uh, to accept his award. It's <laughs> pronounced <laughs> GIF. Uh, yes. Not GIF. Yes. <laughs> you tell it. <laughs> For those who don't know, that was a tradition. It still is, I guess, at the Webby Awards. You get five, five uh, short acceptance speech. You get five words. That's awesome. It's pronounced GIF, not GIF. That's, That's very funny. Awesome. Awesome. Very uh, funny. Anyway. Uh, For I, the day, I too will say GIF. Are you a, a, a hard G kind of guy? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Yes. I am too, and thing. I don't know why, but he did, in fact, very famously, well, you saw you it's saw a yourself. graphical yourself. thing. Yeah, it's a graphic interchange format. Yeah. Um, but you know what? It's it, this is his day. It's his day. It's his, it's his, his day. It's his day. The, what else did he do? Not much. <laughs> oh, that was enough. <laughs> uh, actually, that was uh, twenty say about us, Leo. Twenty thirteen. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, right. We did. Yeah, it's more than we did. <laughs> that was twenty thirteen. That was uh, eight, nine oh, years okay. ago. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes oh, a oh, lot more sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And um, it was created for CompuServe. He worked at CompuServe. And actually, the interesting uh, story here is uh, he did it on his, in his spare time and didn't bring it into CompuServe until he had gotten it just so. So. Um, <laughs> and now you can easily create them on your weak little smartphones. Yeah. Although, as I said, the GIFs originally were not uh, necessarily animated. It was just a a compressed uh, format, a graphics interchange format. Um, but it was very important to the development of the web it, uh, and CompuServe and all the online services because they were very small, very compressed. Mm -hmm. And so you could get a, a very tiny um, little little thing, little thing. Speed up those low times. Yeah. I wonder if I can so find... 74. Yeah, 74. Left his wife uh, behind and... Uh, she asked everybody to say Jeff in his honor. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. I, as I remember, it was not an unencumbered format. I think Sperry, Sperry Univac, remember that, Jeff? Owned the uh, uh, the um, compression algorithm. Yes, I think and so. And there was an issue, because they had the patent... And so uh, for Unisys, rather, had it, well, it was Sperry Univac before it was Unisys. So um, when Will Height released it in 1987, it, could, it was used legitimately, um, sort of, but there was a controversy over the licensing agreement between Unisys and CompuServe. And that's why Ping arose in 1994, oh. seven years later. Okay. Ping was a replacement for GIF, in fact, a much improved Replacement, replacement for Jeff. Let me see. I'm reading right now, bamboozled at the revolution. Oh, I want to read that. John Bonavalli. It's ten years old. Yeah, but it's 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 about media companies screw, utterly screwing up the internet, not knowing what to do, and and, and the stories. Some stories that I'm not in it, but I was involved in some of these stories, like when Time Inc. and and Kanye West wanted to buy Alta Vista. <clears throat> uh, Pathfinder, all these things, but it was it was the time of CompuServe and Prodigy and AOL and everybody guessing which one of those was going to win. Yeah, we didn't know, did we? Google yeah. didn't exist yet. Uh, yeah. The first GIF I saw was, as I mentioned, the, the and I, I was blown away. I remember vividly seeing it, and I think in 1994, with the Netscape Navigator browser, 
the web was static, static stills, and this mm -hmm. compass, the points on the compass were moving, and I was, I, I can remember my jaw dropping. I was so stupid. I remember they did that at one of the Conde Net sites we started, and, and our site, our pages were too slow, and I said, well, that, 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 that animated thing is constantly using bandwidth, and they said, no, Jeff. No, it's not. It's <laughs> like that. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, but you weren't wrong. In order to do it, they had to download all the frames, mm -hmm. so GIFs could be, I'm sorry, GIFs yeah. could GIFs. be quite big. <laughs> Because uh, you had to download the whole thing and then it animated it by going through, cycling through the frames. Anyway, uh, that, that's how we begin the show. With farewell, a, Mr. Wilhite. A farewell to Mr. Wilhite. Thank you and for a your thank contributions. You. Yeah. yeah. Do, I, I think you still see GIFs everywhere. Oh, God, yeah. The oh, Unisys patent yes. uh, expired and so it didn't have to be pings. Pings support animations, but these are all animated GIFs. On the uh, what on, would Discord be without them? I know, <laughs> <laughs> or well, Slack, any social media, yeah, Slack. or Twitter. And oh my God, there's Twitter. my head being shaved. Uh, I send them to um, <laughs> I send them to my family via my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, the family communication is usually in GIFs. Here's a question: Is the yeah. Google are the Google animated thumbs and all those? Those are are those GIFs too? I wonder or. Are no. they using probably more modern? They're they're emojis, they're gifts, they're stickers, and those animated things. What are those called? Well, I mean, they may. I'm just asking what, what the, the background technology is. is yeah. If it's GIF, I don't or not. know. Yeah, it's really hard to say GIF. <laughs> it is. It's really. Hard. I'm, I'm impressed you can. It's, I, I it can't. It, no, <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say it because I've never said it the other way. But then again, every time I'm around smart folks like you are. No, there's no right. <laughs> if we're going to say there's a right way to say it, we're going to give Steve Wilhite the pride of of telling us how you, I'm not how you quite say it. I don't know. He's Steve dead. Wall it doesn't are. matter to him anymore. Oof. It mattered to I'm him when he was alive. Cold station. She is harsh. That's, wow. That's oh. when you should have said it. <laughs> he did over and over. And did we ignore him? Well, no, that's. Yes. <laughs> that's when you should have said it. Not now when it doesn't. I mean. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not cold. It's just realistic. I love Man. that. Uh, boy, the Lapsus gang has been very busy. The Lapsus extortion group, uh, they, they hacked Microsoft, leaked out 36 gigabytes of source code for Windows, for Cortana, and for Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants it? Nobody wants to run their own Bing. Now they've breached something called Okta. And uh, anybody who's done enterprise security yep. or IT knows Okta very well. It's used as a second form of authentication. Mm -hmm. uh, putatively, I'll use that word because I don't know why, because I'm a show off. Because you need 50 cents <laughs> or a I dollar. I need 50 cents. <laughs> putatively, it is more secure than a te text message. Maybe not today. Maybe not today. The Lapsus Digital Extortion Gang has been very busy, and they publish this on their Telegram channel. Okta says, okay, we're not saying they didn't do something, but it was on January 21st, and it was one account, and we've constrained the damage, and so we probably, uh, you don't have to worry. Can I ask my dumb question of the day? Yeah. What? Does releasing the source code of Bing actually do nothing? It's a it's so. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a proprietary, right? It's a, yeah. it's, a it's a company secret. I mean, it's not like if you got the recipe for Coca Cola, you could make Coca Cola. It's not like if you got the recipe for Bing, you could make Bing. This is right. more of a bragging rights of yeah. look, I got you. you it's know. interesting right. to okay. see. All Okay, I am on Twitter. I'll just be honest, but Ooh. a Bloomberg reporter, Ooh. William Turton, is saying that he's got a story coming up, but he's saying that a 16-year-old living in his mother's house in Oxford, England, is suspected to be the mastermind behind many of the hacks conducted by the hacking group Lapsus. A 16-year-old living in his sources. mom's basement. Okay, <sighs> Probably just in his mom's house. Because yeah, she almost no, no, said we're gonna we're gonna put him in the basement. No, 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 no. He's sleeping on a cot in the basement. I guarantee. You. And he's yeah. <laughs> wow, he's sixteen. Well, this is this is what this reporter is. He oh, I hasn't believe filed it. Filed his story yet? I totally. What else did, did they do? What else did this group? Oh, Lapsus has been around there. So that's interesting because it's that sh that says it's not. By the way. Uh, state, Russian state actors, state or state actors. Yeah. Turns out any 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 old buddy could do that. 
Uh, I first heard their name a couple of weeks ago on Security Now, and I'm trying to remember uh, what it what it was. Um, they are they are asking for money. That's why their name L A P S U S ends in a dollar sign, <laughs> which sounds like, to be honest, something a 16 year old living in his mom's house might do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. this is clever. It's two S's, one's a dollar sign. We're not going to be like Cash App. We're going to put it at the end. <laughs> uh, they they uh, first one of their first victims was the Brazilian Ministry of Health. Fifty terabytes worth of data stolen and deleted. Mm. Among that uh, COVID nineteen pandemic information, took them a month before they could get their systems up and running again. That's a nice little hack, isn't that sweet? Nvidia. Fell claim to a uh, failed victim to a cybersecurity incident, uh, incident attributed to lapses last month. They, uh, that's the one where they stole a terabyte of uh, data, including employee passwords from NVIDIA. Samsung confirmed that data had been breached in an attack, including source code relating to the Galaxy smartphones. You know, this is sounding more and more like a 16-year-old who would want the source code. And well, why can't we go after these folks and hire them and give them jobs? Well, I bet you he gets a job in about four years after he gets out of juvie. <laughs> Lapsus also claims to have compromised <laughs> video game developer Ubisoft. Mm. Uh, and the company said, yeah, well, we did have to reset passwords across the organization. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. Not much. Now, this is from a ZDNet article uh, today. Obviously, they don't have the sources our Bloomberg reporter has. Uh, not much is known about Lapsus itself other than it's a cyber criminal gang. I'm going to put that in quotes. quotes. Yeah. Believed to operate out of South America that hacks into the networks of large organizations to steal data and extort payments. Wrong. They're wrong. Tidy. <laughs> wrong. Or Daily City. They publish the information on a Telegram channel. Um, they seem to have a variety of techniques, uh, including phishing emails and uh, exploiting public-facing remote desktop protocol uh, uh, installations. So who's the guy? It's on Bloomberg. I want to see this article. His name is William RFC. Turton. So at William Turton, T-U-R-T-O-N. He is a Bloomberg reporter. I stuck the tweet on line 17 yeah. next to this story for you. Oh, good. <laughs> That's hysterical. A 16-year-old living in his mother's oh, house. You got it. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'll look forward to seeing the full story. That's quite a scoop, Mr. Turton. Yeah, I was like, that is okay. Indeed. Yeah. Of course, it's Bloomberg, and didn't they publish some of yeah. the other crazy stuff? Let's. See. I don't. You know, I still think Bloomberg's good. I. I yeah. I, I, do, I was like, that's why I was like, who is this dude? Oh, okay. Yeah, Bloomberg. Yeah. See, see despite the the super micro reporting, which they've never uh, never lived changed down, or never, retracted, never retracted, never proved, but never disproved. Uh, I don't think it. Re it didn't tarnish them as much as it should have, although. You're not alone, Stacey. Everybody, when they hear Bloomberg now, a uh, sure. story like this says, oh, yeah, super micro guys? Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Bloomberg because I, I pay the money for I pay Bloomberg. Him. And I, do, I think it's generally good. I do not good. see the story yet. So yeah. we'll see. Okay. Wow. What a story. Thank you for finding that. Yes. See, I'm glad you were on Twitter. <laughs> I was, well, so I was the reason I was on Twitter <laughs> was I was pushing my uh, my talk to Mark or my our what's that called? Help me book, book club. club. Book club. Oh, yeah. I was pushing the book club. I saw that Aunt had pushed like out something. Did you like, find the John Roach obituary? Is that what you posted? That was the, uh, yes, I just put that in there. So this just in from Twitter. I have never heard of this guy, but he was a pioneer of the personal computer. John Roach, dead at 83. He helped make the home computer ubiquitous, says the New York Times a bit, by introducing the fully assembled Tandy TRS-80, which was so novel at the time. He also looks like you, like Leo. Wow. <laughs> How many cousins you have out here, man? <laughs> Your DNA is everywhere. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's the next avatar. I can't believe all three of you said that at the same time. <laughs> Holy crap. It must be true. Um, that was in 1986 when he was chairman and chief executive of the Tandy Corporation. Well, you can look, you scroll down and see what you're going to look like in a few years there. Oh, boy. Actually, that's a good question. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I, think I, look, I think I look like that now. Uh, that's actually uh, 2009. <clears throat> that's 13 years ago, so... 
Wow. Uh, he was, uh, so, I, you know, when he's the chairman of the company, I'm not sure I give you full credit for inventing Actually it. putting it together. Yeah. Nuts and bolts, if you will. Uh, the TRS-80 was beloved by some, called the Trash-80 Trash by others. $600 through a Radio Shack. Uh, it was the first computer for a lot of people listening mm -hmm. uh, right now. Very, very, very popular. I never had one, but my cousin did. Yeah, it's like that. I mm -hmm. wish I'd had one. I came, went over to my cousin's house to play with his, that kind of And he didn't know like what the thing. heck he was doing with yeah. it. It was a brick for the most part. I did not have one either. Uh, all right, so enough uh, people right, passing enough away. I don't they, wanna... they come in threes. Uh, who knows who's going next? Mm. Do you, from your vast experience at Entertainment Weekly, is that true, Jeff? It just seems so because you then go back and think of the two prior deaths and right. say, oh, they come in threes. Right. Well, actually, yes, that is the third thing. That is the third death. Oh, hold on one second. Be right back. Oh, he's gonna... Jeff, don't Wait, die. You don't need to. Say he's it's okay. For the Reaper? You don't <laughs> need to. We don't need to make you the third. It's okay. Speaking of which, this is the last print edition. Oh, that just. Uh, so is this, this just came out? Sp yeah. Speaking but, of but, death, but, uh, but Barry Diller. Oh, there we go. There's the third. Barry e. Diller killed it uh, with its with its cover billing. Um, is that J.D. Lang on the cover? The future of Hollywood. Is that J. was J.D. Lang? Lang. I, that was rather controversial for me. Yes. Wait a minute. So the Kenobi one is the last one. Yeah. Oh, so was... the, the the oh the one in your right hand is the first one. That's the first one. Oh, oh okay. I was wondering okay. why they were doing a cover story on Katie Lang as their very last <laughs> um, episode. Okay. There you go. Star Wars related. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi. And the future of Hollywood. Uh, Ewan we'll McGregor as Obi-Wan. Uh, not not the only one true Obi-Wan, Alec Guinness. Um, Obi-Wan. Yeah. <clears throat> Goodbye, Entertainment Weekly. Bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye, my uh, baby. Hey, you might be interested. Ron Richards, the uh, host of All About Android, tweeted, Got my last issue of Entertainment Weekly today in the mail as someone who subscribed in year one. Back in 1991, I have a lot of emotions. Seems fitting the last cover would be Star Wars related. Goodbye, Entertainment Weekly. I'll miss you most of all. So, Ron. Here was issue number two. Do you have them all? Tim O'Brien's, The Things They Carried. Oh, that was an amazing I, I was told book. this was a... Wow. Uh, it was an amazing book, but it was not exactly something... They didn't tell me they were selling this on the newsstand. I thought it was a subscription-only magazine. As the circulation director said, it was the only magazine uh, camouflaged on the newsstand. Well... Also, since it was 1991, we were out of Vietnam, so I'm not sure I really understand the headline. Why can't was, we get out of Vietnam? Well, because we can't get out of our heads. Now, call me ignorant, which I'm sure a lot of you do. Is is this available on newsstands? It was. Not well, last issue, yes, it is. It it is. is. Oh, we can yeah. run out and get it. Yeah, collector's I item. Collector's I think I'd edition. like to get one. I, I used to get, seems like I re remember having my hands on an EW, and I don't remember ever subscribing, but I remember having my hands on one and throwing a couple away here and there. Um, but yeah, I would like to have that one. I have Star Wars. I have her third know. death. Madeline Albright just died. Yes, by the way. She was in our world. Yes, yeah, she did. She was the first female Secretary of State. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. 84. So I guess we have three, so stop it. There it is. Knock it yeah. off. No more. No more. Uh, if you're worried about cyber attacks, you're not alone. The president spoke earlier this week saying, get ready, they're coming. This article in New Yorker by Sue Halpern. The threat of Russian cyber attacks looms large. We had a warning last week mm -hmm. from the intelligence uh, community. Uh, this is an extension of the Shields Up program that was launched when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine back in February. This is specifically targeting SATCOM. And I don't know if y'all remember me talking about Space Force being yes. legit. Yes. This is actually talking about Ukraine had attacked Viasat satellites soon, or sorry, Russia had attacked Viasat satellites soon after they invaded. And this is an extension of that. So basically, CISA and the FBI put out a warning this week and said, we already told all the infrastructure people to, to get ready and make sure that you've got your plans in place. Now we're doing a specific one for satellite, people, the yeah. satcom industry. Yeah. Um, and they are hearing credible, like beforehand, there weren't really any credible threats. It was just like, get ready, y'all. 
Um, so we assumed I, sorry, that they would do it. I just had to put fact, my two cents in there. One of the questions everybody's been asking is, why haven't they yet really done an all-out attack? And in this article, uh, the author kind of says, well, once you can start drop, dropping bombs, <laughs> a cyber attack isn't, you know, you, you're just going to drop more bombs. Um, they took out, uh, when they took out Viasat right before the invasion that was to take out uh, Ukraine internet, but Viasat is used by the military in the United States, uh, as well as the uh, Ukrainian army and number of Western militaries. The U.S. military says uh, the attack did not affect us. Uh, they use Viasat for some battle management system. So you could see why you would want to mm -hmm. take that out before you invaded. The real question is, though, uh, you know, Russia has been using Ukraine as a testing ground for years, more than a decade. Why they haven't unleashed the hounds of hacking uh, on Ukraine or on us Biden said, I have previously warned about the potential that Russia could conduct malicious cyber activity against the U.S., including as a response to the unprecedented economic costs we've imposed on Russia alongside our allies and partners. It's part of Russia's playbook today. My administration is reiterating those warnings based on evolving intelligence that the Russian government is exploring options for potential cyber attacks. So, yeah, CISA has been saying, put your shields up. In fact, I saw a tweet that's actually it was a good tweet this morning saying, OK, you want to help, you know, the fight against Ukraine? Update your routers, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> secure your systems, because a lot of times yeah. that's exactly what happens is is normal people like you and me. Our routers are vulnerable. Right. Steve did a whole thing yesterday on Security Now about micro tick routers, which have updated firmware, but nobody has updated. Lots of people have not updated them mm -hmm. and they're used in then massive DDoS attacks. They're did he have a utility up? Check. He did not write a utility, but uh, but his strong suggestion was to anybody, not just somebody using a microtik router, but anybody uh, using a router should check to make sure they have the latest firmware because if there is a flaw in the router, yeah. you could very well be part of an attack on the Ukraine on Ukraine or on the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now, according to my YouTube history, about three weeks ago we talked about on Twit um, a potential cyber attack from the U.S on the offensive towards right. Russia. Uh, you, you think we're capable well, of Well, there's, so it's interesting. There's, um, there's speculation in Halpern's article about uh, why it hasn't happened. She quotes a fellow at Hoover Institution who says, if you're already at a stage in a conflict where you're willing to drop bombs, you're going to drop bombs. Mm -hmm. But she says it also may be Russia never had the capability its adversaries ascribed to it in the first place. I'm not sure that's, true, or it may be that the Russian generals prosecuting the war are skeptical of relying on weapons composed of zeros or ones. I could believe that. Or that the Russians, and I think this is the most likely, and I think this is what we talked about three weeks ago, tried to replicate their earlier attacks, but Ukraine's digital defenses, which are much stronger now, successfully fended them off. And I think Stacey Ury also saying that, that the attention, the million, we, the U.S. has pumped uh, I think $18 million so far with a pledge for 30 more into Ukraine cyber defense. And we've done much of the same thing with CISA here in the United States. Mm. Uh, I, th is it, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we just, I think we were talking about this. Uh, we just are maybe a little more hardened than we thought. I still wouldn't be complacent. Uh, well, and I also, I, I think we have been investing in that. There's good news there, but I also, I, I've made this point a couple of weeks ago, is once Russia does that, especially if they do this here in the U.S., and it causes a loss of life, we're going to treat that like we would a, a physical attack, yeah. and we will it's physically an enter. Yeah. 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 So that may be another reason that, although they... I mean, yeah, <laughs> at this point, to it's to still going, yeah. Sabers. Yeah. Uh, like, whew, I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on it. All right, let's take a little break. We have more uplifting news. This has been a, a grim downer of an opening segment, so we're going to cheer you up with something a funny, it's uh, a moral panic, funny TikTok. <laughs> anything you got? Just you know, get it ready. More death and oh, okay, war. I'll, I'll look at TikTok now. Just okay, tell I'll, me. I'll just there. tell me oh, what no. line. <laughs> he he asked for it. I show today. I'll go oh, find dear. Something. I show today. Brought to you by Code Academy. Are you ready to change your career? There's never been a better time to be a programmer. They, they are in high demand right now. And as a result, are highly paid, great benefits, 
Great jobs out there. And with Codecademy, you can learn to code on your own terms. Over 50 million people already have. They already know Codecademy is the best way to learn to code. That's because Codecademy not only teaches you job-ready coding skills, but also helps you build unique projects for your portfolio. That's really important. Companies look at that and say, what have you done? And it's nice. And one of the things about coding that's so great is you can do stuff for yourself that still show off your skills and still get credit for it. You also can earn certificates at Code Academy. That's often very important. And they even help you prep for technical interviews. That's the thing that always scares me when I think about getting a job as a coder. Do I have the interview process? But you'll be ready. You'll be prepared. I've used Code Academy uh, myself because I, I like learning. And it's a really great way to learn. I've played with their uh, Python classes. What's nice is when you start using Code Academy, you start programming right away. When you, your very first lesson you'll enter code you'll run it you'll find out what's wrong you'll fix it and it runs and i don't know you know if if you ever had this experience but everybody who codes had that experience that first time when they wrote a program for me it was you know 10 print hello actually it was more like 10 print leo's the cool guy and then 20 go to 10 <laughs> in that infinite loop and when it happens when the computer does what you said it should do mm. That's a magic moment. You can have that magic moment right now. You'll learn at your own pace. You'll get qualified for in-demand jobs. You can choose what to learn from building basic websites to artificial intelligence and everything you could want. No matter what your experience level, you'll be writing real working code in minutes. It's a great feeling. It really is to sit down, type out some code and say, I got the computer to do something. Lots of languages, Python, HTML, CSS, SQL, JavaScript, if you're not sure where to begin, and I love this, Lisa and I both did this, we took Code Academy's programming personality quiz. It's not a test of your programming skills. It's, it's to, it asks you about how you learn, what you like. It's kind of like career counseling. And it's great. It's tailored career advice and course recommendations based on your strengths and your interests. Lisa, for instance, it was right on. They said, you should, you should do R, you should do statistics because you've got a mind, a head for numbers. And they looked at me and they said, you should be a shepherd because you have, no, they, they looked at me, <laughs> I took the test and they said, uh, I would be good. I should study computer science, which I'm agree. I agree. That's what I'm most interested in. I'm not sure, uh, uh, you know, what it will tell you, but take at least do this, go to codecademy.com and take the personality quiz. It's an interactive program. You'll learn by doing. You can build your portfolio. You'll get the certificate of completion. You put that in your LinkedIn, then land your dream job, whether it's in web development, programming, computer science, data science, or tons more. I think Codecademy is the best way to learn. Join over 50 million people who agree. Learn to code with Codecademy and see where coding can take you. I will say this absolutely. It is so much fun. It's so gratifying. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership. Just go to codecademy.com, promo code TWIG. Please use that because uh, then they'll know you saw it here. Promo code T W I G, codecademy.com. That gets you 15% off Code Academy Pro, the best way to learn to code. C O D E C A D E M Y dot com. Codecademy.com. Don't forget the promo code TWIG. Thank you, Code Academy. For your support of this week in Google. Woohoo. Woohoo. Um, I guess we should talk about this UK law. The online safety bill, wrong in so many ways, including jail time potentially for tech executives. Executives from Meta, TikTok, and other tech companies would face. The prospect of jail time, this is from Mark Stefano and Sylvia Varnum O'Regan writing in the information, under sweeping new legislation proposed by the UK government, the aim of the bill is to curb illegal and harmful internet content. It's called the Online Safety Bill. It's going to be introduced for a vote tomorrow. Ugh. Tech executives will be potentially facing criminal prosecution if they fail to comply with decisions made by the regulator in charge of enforcing the law. This is well, the worst part of it is. Yeah. 
that they're told to take down legal but harmful content without the government defining what is harmful. So if you don't figure out what's harmful and take it down, your rump is... You're in trouble. Oh, boy. Yeah. They don't have, obviously, the First Amendment because that would be unconstitutional yep. in the United States. Yep. For the government to tell anybody what they can or cannot say is, uh, is against uh, the First Amendment. The provision to include liability for senior management and not just companies has been called the Nick Clegg Law in Downing Street, obviously. Oh, that's why. <laughs> obviously, Let's get Nick. <laughs> Nick does not, did not leave a, lot, a trail of friends behind when he left the uh, <laughs> government in uh, the UK. He is, of course, now a senior vice... A senior, I think he's a president of global operations at Facebook, and apparently he could be found criminally liable... Uh, now, you, you, you'll have to destroy evidence, give false information to the regulator, or obstruct officials from entering company offices. So I doubt Nick will be doing any of that. But it is... He'll have someone else do it. Yes. So it'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, the UK government hopes to... It's, of course, got Boris Johnson's support, hopes to pass the law by the end of the year or early next year. The it became a hot mess. Bill. They just threw in the kitchen sink. This includes the need for anybody showing pornography to get age verification. Can, can we talk about privacy violations and problems and, and, well, and data? Yeah, is going to go. And let me tell you, the places they're talking about to get age verification include pubs. Yeah, you go down. You're 16 years old. You go down to your pub to show them your ID to so that can you I can... have a beer, a pint, and some porn. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, the safe harbor principle, uh, which is essentially their section 230, also would be rolled back. Um, <laughs> while some of the tougher parts of the legislation, the information rights, appear controversial in tech circles, yes, the Boris Johnson-led government is confident the public largely supports the bill. Think of the children. It's, well, it's the same as, as, as the hearing going on in Washington right now. Hide, be, hide your authoritarianism behind child porn. You can do anything. Moral panic. Okay. Well, all, you know, what are you going to do? They've got the Snoopers charter. There's all sorts of stuff going on in the UK. I, I would hope we would be smart enough not to do here. Let's hope. Let's hope. I would hope so. Let's they also added, they added in no cyber flashing. What's, I didn't know that wait, was what's literally. cyber what flashing? That? Uh, that is, uh, um, you Maybe know, I shouldn't ask. sending a picture of, you know what, to oh. a young person. Oh, that's cyber flashing. That's a I, new I, way of putting it. I didn't it. know it was taking over the world. <laughs> Apparently it it's, is. Uh, we've got to do something. Think of the children. But they also uh, buy the favor I would like, of media. I would like exemption. actually not to get unsolicited pics. Yeah. Or, or, yes, that's I okay. I mean, yeah. I'm for that. Would you, no, uh, I, if, if somebody were to do that and not anybody I know, would you want them to be thrown in jail? Um, I would like the opportunity to press charges and have yeah. them. Yeah, actually. I yeah. Would. Yeah. Well, if you didn't Maybe real okay, be a yeah. sex offender. You know what? The Keep your penis to yourself. Keep it to yourself, buddy. No There's one wants title to see for that. You. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, money laundering and human I mean, trafficking I I will are also included. Also equally awful. Um, removing legal but Maybe. harmful. <laughs> Content is the most controversial, as you said, yes. Jeff. Yes. It's nasty, but it's not it's illegal. Offensive. Yeah. But but if the government tells well, you to take it down, it becomes porn. de facto illegal. Right. Right. And it's not just child. I mean, there are things like there are no laws right now. Well, in some places against upskirt photos. But, you know, a yeah, lot no, of that people should be like illegal. Not see I agree. Those. I agree. Yeah. So it should be illegal. You know, you're like, do you go in and make legal rulings for every creepy things like oh this guy installed a bathroom camera and stuck those in there is that its own brand of like that's a fair argument that's already illegal behavior? in the real world right i mean it, but it's not flashing is that's already illegal thing. yeah but sending a photo of your penis is not sending is it, excuse is me not? an unsolicited photo i don't know no. is it no it's not illegal no. unsolicited oh well that's good it's to know. not an unsolicited <laughs> no <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, you might like if you're doing it at a company, you might get like HR might. Fire. Oh yeah, you can get a lot. You can get a lot of trouble. You can get in trouble, yeah. but it's not against the law. Well, I but don't it's know. It's not against the law. We should. I get, don't know. We should we get a lawyer now. If you send, if you send a picture of your penis to a minor, minor, that's a well, different that story. Is definitely against Maybe. the law. Yeah. 
Well, but what again, if you, you what if well, you New York State bill? There's a bill in the New York State Senate. I just searched this. A person is guilty of unsolicited disclosure disclosure of an intimate image when, with the intent to harass, annoy, or alarm another person, that's added in, mm -hmm. which serves no legitimate purpose. What legitimate purpose could it be? Uh, yeah, he or she yeah. sends by electronic device an unsolicited Im image to another per such person. So there's these things are. But, but it's, not a bill. Flash it's not illegal. It's not illegal. That's interesting. In California, yeah. there's a flash act in California. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of stuff coming along the, the pike. So maybe it'd be better to but have for specific, the longest time. specific laws against specific things, or you think there's just a, such a wide range that you there's can't? There's such a wide range. I mean, so, and I'm, I'm saying this as someone who has watched uh, men harassing women on digital platforms play out in a lot of different ways. Totally and it's agree. it's not just men. Totally agree. Um, there are not, in a lot of cases, laws. Two, police departments aren't interested in prosecuting right. this or able to No, you understand. have to uh, threaten uh, death or put somebody in fear for their life for them to go after. Uh, but it that. is and that's distressing. Very black and it's and horrible. It's, yeah. But and, you understand the concern is that it might also be a satiric comic about Boris Johnson's hair or likening President Xi to Winnie the Pooh. And that's the I problem is you have, have to be yeah. specific enough to get the best. Yeah, the law stuff. has to be specific. It's it's unconstitutional to be so unspecific that you don't know what the law is. Yeah. That's the issue. Right. Yeah. And and this does not cover all those bases. And we've we've historically been very bad at labeling. I mean, even we'll know it when we see it. Right. Um, and part of it is, I'm gonna just be honest, it's because men tend to write our laws and enforce them. And mm -hmm. a well lot of said. them poo-poo the harms of some of this. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Hey, speaking of bad laws, I just, are y'all playing the Tech Dirt's March Madness most misunderstood legal concept? It is pretty funny. Oh, no. This it's is hilarious. their brackets, their version of the they, brackets. Uh, it's the legal yeah, misunderstanding there, March Madness. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's new to me. It's, so. on the, it's on the rundown. Yeah. So uh, should we play it? I mean, you could. Yeah. You just have to fill out your spreadsheet. And oh, do it. you do it yourself. I get it. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's not like super fancy. I think Mike was just like, "We'll give it a whirl." <laughs> but they're good. Uh, Section two thirty is on there. Here, here's the bracket. Uh, oh, this is nice. It's a Google Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty two legal misunderstanding March Madness, First Amendment rules of evidence. Which one? So what you're predicting is. The most more, misunderstood. Are more, wrong misunderstood. About, more misunderstood. And how are they going to determine that? Uh, because you just they're going to. Yeah, I'm going to say the number of no, people no, because they're they're, they're compiling. No, they are compiling this, and I saw the numbers. So section two thirty versus something else was like eighty seven. I think it was HIPAA, wasn't it? Versus thirteen percent. It's based on a poll or something. Here's this HIPAA. Is this is the poll. So the first. No, this is not a poll. This is your vote. For which is yeah, well, misunderstood. It's, it's, this is your prediction. That's misunderstood. Yes. So I'm. You're misunderstanding the point of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's what you result. think is the most misunderstood. Right. We and my question is, how are they going to know who wins? Well, let's read Mike. Maybe he tells us. Oh, oh yeah. you There's no no you, you you save it and then you, you fill tweet out the it. bracket. You take a screenshot and yeah. you, you share share it to him. Yeah. So it's just. No, this I understand that, but exact. somebody has to say who won. Who's tabulating <laughs> said votes? Oh, Mike is tabulating it. But okay. these aren't votes. These are predictions. Oh, oh, every so day, I've got it. I'm sorry. I had to read, read the article. I'm the one who never heard of this. You guys are the ones who talk. <laughs> Each day that this is running, Tech Dirt says, we will be posting Twitter polls of the competing legal concepts to see oh. which one is misunderstood the most. Uh, the winner will advance to the next round, eventually crowning the most misunderstood legal concept of 2022. What do you think? I mean, there's quite a few of them. Section 230. Fifth there Amendment, is, Sherman Act, Fair crime. Use, Obstruction of Justice, ADA, Insider Training. First Amendment is pretty common. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, uh, they're, they're which kind of which, which is like more misunderstood, the Hatch Act or the Unruh Act? <laughs> Uh, I don't know which which is more misunderstood going on here the 25th amendment or hearsay these are this is hard 
I sense Kathy Gillis involved in this. Who's going to... Who's? Wait, what is the 25th Amendment? Hold on. That's the right against unreasonable... No, no, wait a minute. That's... No. No, that's not. That's no idea. The 25th Amendment is the is the right to vote for women? What is it? Mm. Look it up quick. No, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking... It lays uh, out the transition the of power of president for president. Is oh, unfit. that's the crazy president one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew I'd heard that recently. So wait, wait, what was it? Crazy president hearsay versus, versus what? crazy president. Ooh, hearsay. Nobody understands hearsay. Hearsay is the, the one I all I know is when you're watching, you know, Law and Order and the attorney jumps up and says, That's hearsay, hearsay. Your Honor, because it's not my eyewitness. Thing I'm reporting somebody else's eyewitness. Thing. I think that's pretty well understood. Someone else heard something. It's understood because of TV. The 25th Amendment is pretty well understood because of. <laughs> never mind. Because of the last presidential <laughs> yeah. era. We never went mind. Through. I bet you, if you asked that question four years ago, it would not Nobody be as well understood. Know. No. Right. You know, actually, if you grew up in the Reagan era, because then they oh wasn't yeah, their debate no, even been, then. You know what? We've been talking about the 25th Amendment since it was created. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends which party you're on, which side you're on. How yeah. about this? It's treason versus OSHA. Ooh, OSHA. Uh, OSHA. OSHA would be, be OSHA. the most confused. I Occupational self uh, safety and health administration. I figure treason would be. We know what more treason confused. is. Although people often say things are treasonous when it they're not. It is not right. Net neutrality or the CFAA? I'd have to look that up. Net neutrality. Copyright or Citizens United, ERISA or Joint and Several, Fire you know, in a Theater or NDA. We can, go and, we can go and vote as a show. That's, 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 if we, I, I'm I not filling out these 55. brackets. There's no, no, a lot of it. Line 55. No, go to Line 55. We can just yeah. vote on Twitter. Wait. Oh. What is the CFFA? CFFA? <laughs> CFAA. You got to look it up. CFAA. Okay. I'm looking it up. <laughs> oh, the Computer Fraud moments. and Abuse Act. Oh, we should know this. We should know that one. That's the Clearly one, of course, that uh, Aaron Schwartz was prosecuted under. Yeah. Um, okay. This is this is actually, you know, this is Mike's Education. secret way of getting everybody to look these things up. Yeah, it is. It's genius. <laughs> He's doing a great job. Nice I feel, nice I feel like I'm helping out a good cause here by looking up things. I'm like, oh, which right, is so the First Amendment or rules of evidence? No, wait, wait, That's the first one. Jeff. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> We're not There's 32 out the of these. We are not doing the brackets. All right. And that's just for I the thought. first round. <laughs> yeah. Then there's thing. the Sweet 16. Then there's the Elite Eight, the Final Few, yes. and the Championship. Yes. It's the Final Four, isn't it? Yes. Final Four. <laughs> I, was like, I told you I don't know sport he's ball. He's definitely not a sports ball guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll we'll final come back team. for the final four. <laughs> Too busy making computers and, and waging Russian war. I'm we casting my votes we, here. We went good. Twitter you cast feed. your votes. We went uh, oh, took to my daughter out to her 30th birthday, which was yesterday for dinner. Cheers. And Henry and I are sitting side by side. We're at the restaurant. We're looking up. There's a basketball game. Henry says, "Oh, why aren't they showing the uh, March Madness?" Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's basketball. He said, no, no, that's the NBA. I said, oh, yeah, there's LeBron. He said, no, that's, no, geez. that's the Nets. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. So I uh, proved that I know nothing. <laughs> you are Russian. I am Russian. I am that guy. I am a deep cover. What do they call that when you, when you, when you like in the Americans, when you're a mole and you're, and you're under deep cover and you... You, know, yeah. you, you skipped the week deep on cover. American sports. <laughs> I forgot that. I thought I should have gone. Espionage. Should have gone. Uh, that's a fun one. I like that. I like that. Uh, let's see. What else here? Yeah, I was going to say, it's not like we have a lot of Google news to discuss, so I figured we could throw some fun stuff in here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aw. through the rundown. Unsolicited dick ticks. There's a... John, <laughs> we told you. No unsolicited dick ticks. <laughs> For, the, for our listeners, perhaps for our listeners, you might want to explain. Okay. A dick dick <laughs> is a kind of aminal. It's an ungulant. Is it an ungulant? I don't know. There's it's, a cute picture. Does it of have one. hooves? Unbelievable. <laughs> Jammer B, unbelievable. Uh, now I'm looking up dick dick ungulant. So uh, dick dicks are named for the alarms calls of the females. In addition to the female's alarm call, both the male and female make a Shrill whistling sound, class mammalia, order Arteriodactyla, family Bovidae. They're they're 
They're cows, bovines, bovines. Uh, subfamily uh, and, and you yelled at me for trying to go through concepts of law and saying that was distracting. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> It I'm is, going down tech dirt, and is, you're going into dick dicks. It is the <laughs> ultimate ungulate. I'm just oh, saying. Jeez, just telling you. Here's a here's another okay, unsolicited I'm listening picture to their, of a dick dick. I'm uh, listening to their call, and it doesn't sound like dick dick. It sounds like whistling. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but their little nose never, does this cute? very cute thing. Yeah. It's like a little tiny elephant trunk or something. Oh my gosh. By the way, but it looks important. like a deer nose. Oh, this is from ultimateungulate.com. Kirk's dick dick is not in danger. What the heck is it? Where I'm just glad this? if if your name Where is Kirk, congratulations. <laughs> Ungulate. All right, let's let's it's move a small back on. Did you know there's an open Ungulate. internet alliance from the small internet companies? Oh God, who cares? Oh, thank you, Mr. Jarvis. <laughs> you know who else doesn't care? Jonah Peretti no longer cares. Did you see this article from the Defector? He, when he, well, I couldn't read it all because it's beyond a paywall. Oh, you're right. It is. Um, I have this thing <laughs> that says, "Take down these walls, Mr. Gorbachev." He laid off a year ago 70 employees, including 47 HuffPost staffers in the U.S. To drive long-term sustainability today, he announced, this was yesterday, he once again is reducing the BuzzFeed workforce to, quote, accelerate profitability. Hey, you know what? When you're an owner, sometimes you have to do that. Well, he's not the owner now. It's the stock market, and that's the issue. Yeah. Ooh. He closed basically the entire news division, I think. And so I, I tweet. I tweeted about this. I think it's it's too bad they won the Pulitzer Prize. They've done brilliant work. They're Buzzfeed wonderful. News has been great, but, but you know what? It, it, yeah. And I even said this on the show. It's tainted because it started with Buzzfeed, and you think Buzzfeed listicles. Well, you know, but they got past that. It really got a reputation. But the problem was there was never a business model. Yeah, it was always subsidized yeah. by Buzzfeed and the listicles, and and people said, "Oh, this is wonderful. It's the future of news." I said, "Oh, well, I wish," mm -hmm. but never the, the Buzzfeed business model. Hey, we can make our stuff viral. We can make your stuff viral. Didn't f come over to news. You have the same problem every news organization has. Who wants to be next to news? Nobody. That's the problem. Peretti, who news uh, is such a bummer, was the founder. Yeah, exactly. Had an all hands meeting. Uh, following the resignation announcements from uh, BuzzFeed News editor in chief Mark Schufs and the other top two other top editors Nakamoto and Kaminer, uh, he said he's making cuts, et cetera, et cetera. And then right before the Q and A, he just leaves. He logs out, <laughs> <laughs> and people were pretty upset. Uh, Julia Reinstein tweeted, "I've worked at this company for seven years, and I've never felt so disrespected than seeing my CEO log out." without answering a single question about why he wants to gut my newsroom. But it is, I think the point of this is, is news sustainable is the real question. Is it, is, can it, can it, is it going to just be the New York Times, the Washington Post, and that's it? It's not sustainable at the infinite profit margins apparently shareholders expect. Right. I think news um, can be sustainable. You don't think news uh, can be sustainable? No, no, no. What I, what I, I think that's, I think it may be going a little too far. I think that 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 at, yes, at the scale of the stock market, there's only three brands that bring in two thirds of the subscription models. Advertising has changed markedly, includes the ad market as a whole is going down, and they haven't reinvented themselves. But at a different scale, no, I still believe that it is possible to have sustainable news. So, profitably, if you'd let me smaller. finish, that is exactly what I was going to say. Yay! Oh, sorry, I thought Yay. you asked me. Thank you. I thought you asked me. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's because you interrupted, and then then I. I'm sorry. Like, oh, Shame I'm sorry. on you, Mr. I apologize. Jarvis. I apologize. I'm just like, I apologize. Oh. <laughs> it was. It I'm is. You today. Sorry, Jim. It is profitable. You know, well, they I'm going to get. People are going to yell at me on Twitter, so I, I will get my. I will get my just desserts for that. <laughs> I apologize. I was wrong. I didn't. I thought she was not I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm sure it's my fault for not moderating this panel. Okay, okay, well. okay. Did you go to South by, Stacy? speaking of moderating panels? No, I was really excited ago, right? to not go to South by. Oh. Uh, <laughs> because I no longer live in Austin, so I no longer have to go. Oh, I get it. Was it awful, Stacy, when you lived there? What? To have to deal with it? wasn't it? awful. It's just I'd gone for like almost 20 oh, years. Okay. and. I didn't hear anything notable coming out of South by. Did you? No. I, all I knew was... Uh, Twit friend, um, Mr. Wesley Faulkner was going, and outside of that, he lives in. Oh, he doesn't live in Austin. He lives anymore. in Austin. He no, he doesn't. He moved. Oh. No, he moved. Yeah, he's like I actually in met Wesley somewhere. I know you introduced uh, us. 
in, in oh, Austin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amy Webb, our Amy Webb did her uh, annual keynote there for her oh, she did. Day Institute. Yeah. Okay. There were uh, people forget Mark Zuckerberg did a yep. <laughs> did a panel. I it's thought he was virtual panel. though, right? That's well, he was virtual. virtual. Yeah, yeah, but you know, he, there so might have been some of news it was out of it. Crypto right? stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh hey. I recognize the sound of that fantastic yeah. Samsung <laughs> Galaxy Flip Z3. Boy, that it sounds is. mighty good. It you didn't even pick hurting. your own ringtone? It's not heavy either. It's not heavy. It's not heavy. Oh. It's, it's a so, phone. actually, you still liking it? Is it okay? I do. I good. still I'll like send it. You a bill. Do you want it back? No. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Invoice coming. Uh, you can. No, no, I'm just teasing you. I'll pay you whatever it goes for on Swappa. No, 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 no. It's yours. It's a gift. But I'm just glad you like it. I was just curious if you liked it. Now, don't ask me about the Kobo because I haven't charged that yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Kobo was not a gift. <laughs> the Kobo was, I think technically it's called a dump run. I was going to say an unsolicited <laughs> e-reader. Yeah, it, it was almost as bad as, uh, uh, yeah, it was an unsolicited e-reader. <laughs> I, I drive by e-readed you. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious for y'all's take, maybe because you might be well-versed in corporate, not malfeasance, but shady tactics. Um, the Justice Department asking are talking about how Google employees, the Google, Google has basically told its employees that if they're going to put anything weird in an email, yes. they should loop in an attorney to keep it. They're in trouble for that. Which, yeah. Well, it's kind of a, I'm like, bo it's both like bo mm. clever, but also super shady. Well, I'm sure they thought it was clever, but apparently it's illegal. <laughs> so the Justice Department is, in fact, uh, investigating. They're accusing Google of, and this makes sense. In fact, if you were kind of naive, you might say, good, this is our policy from now on. Uh, the Justice Department said that Google teaches employees to, before, when they're sending a sensitive business communication, like, we got to shut that Facebook down, uh, they should also CC the uh, House, Council? House Council because they shield the documents from discovery it is suddenly protected under attorney-client privilege just by virtue of seeing them. Oh. Now, the yeah, DOJ says they're using false requests for legal advice. That is, they feel, the Well, DOJ. if you're actually asking for the advice, that is legit. I used to have to do that in advance all the time because it was kind of a shadow management of the company, and I had to think it's clear for the lawyers. And before I sent something out, I had to check with the lawyers. And that was... I think because the government might lose on this one. I mean, the, the government is asking the judge to sanction Google and compel disclosure of more documents, documents that are hidden from them due to this uh, attorney-client privilege. But the, I think if I'm the judge, I'm going to say, well, you have to show intent with each and every one of these, yeah. and I don't think you can. So uh, the DOJ was saying, look, they had training sessions. They, t they trained people, just CC the attorney. It doesn't matter. What mm -hmm. they need is a smoking gun. They need an email you know, from Sundar Pichai saying, whatever you do, make sure you CC an attorney. I was told to ch every time I did something. So Advance is a fascinating company because it's family owned, the new houses. And mm -hmm. um, they didn't have a corporate. I was the only corporate employee for a while there. They didn't have corporate and because of the family. And then they had the law firm and the accountancy firm. And if you did anything that had the slightest kind of controversy, not even legally, but just business sense, the bosses, the owners would say, did you check with the lawyers? That was a that was a means of management and a means of checking and making sure that things were going to be passable, and so I God most everything I did went through the lawyers. I mean, it's look, it's, it's just still it's clear that probably Google was using this, uh, but it's also very difficult yeah. to show because it's very a difficult. reasonable business practice. The DOJ lawyers cited um, uh, an email from Sundar Pichai uh, to Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube. He was telling her how to respond to a press inquiry, but he put up at the top attorney client privileged and copied chief legal officer Kent Walker on it. So, but you have yeah, to then. That might be. Right. You have to. It. The I DOJ mean, would have to prove that Sundar Pichai was doing this intentionally to hide it as opposed to legitimately saying, well, I want to make sure the counsel From Sundar in. to whom? To who? Wojcicki. And Wojcicki. So it was internal. Susan. Yeah, I mean, if you did that. And an external, and said, oh, we're going to get around uh, antitrust here because if I met my email to, to Zuck, I'm going to CC. That'd be a no-no. Right. But yeah. internally, checking things out? That seems normal. 
right? Yeah. Google spokesperson yeah. said, just like other American companies, we educate our employees about legal privilege and when to seek legal advice. And she pointed out, we've produced over 4 million documents to the DOJ in this case alone, including many that employees had considered potentially privileged. Uh, I think the government's going to lose on this one. It's worth a try. They, they, what they wanted to use as a, as a litmus test is if it's an email chain where attorneys were copied but never responded to... Uh, or, uh, well, they could have phoned. Yeah. I, you know, they're, this is going to be a hard one to prove. We'll see. The it judge, is. the judge may, uh, may say, no, you're right. Um, uh, but we'll see. I have a feeling it's a hard thing to prove. If this were any other company, would this even have come up? Uh, well, in any other antitrust suit, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think the DAJ probably looks for this all the time. I you just, know? I just... I swear this just looks like some targeting at Google to me. You think I mean, it, I'm trying it to depends. take up like if, or anything, but that just seems a little too odd. Well, you could also say X percent, like 80 percent of the things that we have encountered are protected by attorney client privilege. But uh -huh. in Microsoft, our prior case, only 60 percent were. This looks really suspicious or actually let me make it more egregious. Only 20 percent were. So this seems yeah, unusually yeah. high. I mean, I don't know. I'm not in the Department of Justice. Well, well, except Spacey, what if what if this case is just more clearly legally sensitive, and so you do want more lawyer advice? Yeah, but if if you're saying of all the discovery things that they're pulling for, a greater percentage of general discovery is protected compared to another yeah. company in that position, that might set off alarm bells. I don't know if right. it's default practice or not. I'm, I'm all speculation. Mm. Depends on the company. Depends yeah. on the company. But this is also why lawyers often rise to senior VP and, and That's CEOs. That's right. Because mm -hmm. they really know the company. Yeah. Although, uh, my wife often says that she doesn't want to consult attorneys because they're not business people. That they understand the law, but they're so exposure adverse. Their oh. advice is always to protect themselves as much as to protect you to not do things just because it's risky. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, they don't, they need, they don't temper their legal judgment with business judgment. So she'll, often I've had good lawyers, lawyers and companies that in time, make especially <laughs> where they said, my job is to help you do what you want to do. Right. Let's tell figure out a way to do, do it. I'm going to help you yeah. find the way you can do that or tell you, you can't. And here's why. Right. But the same can be said for HR too. Yeah, well, HR is there to protect the company. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> They're not always. there to protect you. Always right. and forever. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are not there to protect you. That's a very common uh, yeah, mistake employees make. That's the thing. Employees are usually told HR is going to protect you. Uh -uh. And, uh, no. Uh -uh. They're just, uh, just like a lawyer. They're keeping us, uh, they're preventing us from exposing, giving uns unsolicited exposing, exposure. Never exposure. Mind. Especially if there's been actual exposure. Yes. <laughs> no exposure. Oh, here we are again. No exposure. I know. We Right back there. <laughs> I love this. Turnabout is fair play. We talked about this on Mac Break Weekly. So Apple, as you know, uh, will not let companies like uh, Amazon with their Kindle app or their Audible app or Netflix uh, charge uh people in the app without giving Apple 30% mm -hmm. VIG. Cut, and that's been a big issue. Uh, a lot of that's they're being, they were sued over that by Epic and so forth. Mm -hmm. They also have in their developer rules. And not only can you not do that, but if you're not going to sell inside your apps, cause you don't want to give us money, you can't tell people go somewhere else. You can't say, but you can buy this on the web. Click here to Click here. exit out of this app. So Apple had an agreement with Google on the Android store and on Android TV, that if you bought something in Apple TV, you wouldn't Apple wouldn't have to give Google thirty percent. That that agreement expired, and they have not been able to reach terms on in-app payment commissions. So <laughs> Apple has now a button in the Apple TV app on Android and on Google TV says how to watch. And it says you can buy, rent, or subscribe in the Apple TV app on iPhone and iPad and on other streaming devices, just not here. How, how to do it, how to get around it. This is something Apple forbids. But when Google said we want our 30% 
Apple said no, and isn't that called a double standard? And and we're going to put it on a watch button. <laughs> Google uh, allows it, but uh, it's interesting. <laughs> well, that's why Apple is one of the most profitable. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is planet. this is yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess, but in I just Google, think it's, it, in some ways it's kind of like what's happening in politics. Like Democrats can't go be right, right. jerks, but the Republicans can take advantage of their, their silence on things and just mm -hmm. push that line a little further. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it all comes down with uh, to norms and what you're willing to do and not do. And yeah. Yeah. Which you can get away with. Yep. Uh, let's take a little break, and when we come back, we'll have uh, the words of God. So uh, get ready for that. I, something you don't hear all the time on this show. Um, but first, a word from <laughs> <laughs> something you is, don't hear all the is time. Is Jarvis speaking? No, he's yeah. more like Moses. Not Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Moses supposes his toes is with roses, and Moses supposes erroneously. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by... New Relic. If you're a software engineer, oh, you know that late night call. It ain't working. Something's down. The server's down. Something. And you don't know exactly what, right? That's the problem. All you know is customers are screaming. The boss is mad. And you're up in the middle of the night. Your team is scrambling around like crazy, like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. And uh, you're firing up tool after tool trying to figure it out. And you just don't know what's wrong. It's the worst feeling. And if you've ever had that feeling, you know what I'm talking about. You know who doesn't have that feeling? People who use New Relic. Unfortunately, that's only about half of all organizations. Only half of all organizations implement observability for their networks and systems, according to New Relic. Maintaining network observability is a big issue. But, it, but you will not be in the dark if you get New Relic. Relic. Imagine getting that call in the middle of the night. Look, things are going to go down, but knowing exactly what went wrong, maybe a line of codes that you just committed is broken. You'll know you could fix it and you get back to bed in minutes. Stop guessing where the problems lie. New Relic combines 16 different monitoring products you'd normally buy separately so engineering teams can see across the entire software stack in one place. You'll get application monitoring, APM, for your apps, your microservices, unified monitoring. So if it, you know you know exactly what went wrong. Unified's a good word for this. Their network performance monitoring ditches the data silo for a system-wide correlated view of where the performance issues are are happening. So you don't have to kind of page back and forth. You can get distributed tracing, see all your traces without management headaches. You, if you use Kubernetes, you'll love Pixie. Kubernetes observability. And more importantly, you can pinpoint issues down to the line of code. You will know exactly why the problem happened and resolve it quickly. That's why the devs and ops teams at DoorDash and GitHub and Epic Games and more than 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. Whether you're running a cloud-native startup or a Fortune 500 company, it just takes a couple of minutes to set up New Relic in your environment, and then you can go to sleep in peace and never have to worry about that late-night call. They may come, but you'll be able to fix it fast. New Relic. That late night call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data per month, free, forever. Wait a minute, Leo. You just told me it's free? Yes. The whole New Relic platform, no limits, 100 gigabytes of data, free every month, forever, no credit card required. So why are you waiting? Sign up right now, newrelic.com slash twig. N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C dot com slash twig. We thank New Relic so much for supporting This Week in Google. And thank you for supporting us by uh, going to that site so they know you saw it here. NewRelic.com slash twig. This was a great story. I read it in Input Magazine. Uh, and it, it actually has a happy ending, but it seems like a sad story. It's about Thomas Buchler who uh, just passed away at the age of 65 uh, and left behind a so program he'd written pretty much on his own, a program that stopped working 
when Windows 7 was no longer supported by Microsoft, when Apple abandoned 32-bit software. So people were updating their iPhones, their Macs, their Windows machines, and no longer could use it, and were devastated. But they found out that this program, Trope Trainer, was not from a company, but from one guy, mm. a labor of love. And when he passed away, the, uh, suddenly in July at the age of 65, the code disappeared, and no one knew how... Uh, to update it. I'm going to play it a little bit for you. It, it, in order to understand what it does, when you're, and, and I'm not Jewish, but I know many friends who got bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah, mm -hmm. you uh, will sing from uh, the Torah, mm -hmm. right? You'll you'll learn to chant. And of course, that's a big part of your getting ready for your bar mitzvah is is learning these, mm -hmm. uh, these, these chants. Apparently, it can be very complicated because uh, over time, the... It's it's a sing song thing, and different traditions have different pronunciations. Mm -hmm. So there's an Ashkenazi and a Sephardic tra tradition, and and there's different and there's different ways of of singing it. But it's something you have to learn. Uh, in the past, what you'd have to do is is you know go go to the temple and uh, and be taught and listen and learn it and memorize it. But this program, which worked on a PC, uh, Trope Trainer. Actually, I'm going to play a little bit of it for you because even though it's all lost and they used, they he went to uh, Digital Equipment, which was the only one that had a voice synthesizer 20 years ago and got their voice synthesizer to oh. be updated to work with this. Uh, it's kind of an amazing story. I highly recommend it. Um, fortunately, the woman who uh, helped him at DEC, un unpaid, volunteer who helped him at DEC had saved one WAV file of this. So I'm going to play just to give you an idea of what it uh, sounded like. But the people who used it, the kids and the and the rabbis and uh, the people who used it uh, loved it. It, it, was, it. it was amazing. Let me scroll down and find the uh, little WAV file that's on this article. Inputmag.com There's a picture of, uh, of Buchler. Actually, I'm sorry. He died in 2019. I apologize. Okay. So it was several years ago. Uh, in fact, that was what happened was he died in 2019. And then shortly after that, Microsoft discontinued 7. And shortly after that, Apple discontinued 32-bit support and so forth. Um, here is a wave file, 15-second snippet of a voice synthesized to sing sacred words. Oh, wow. So uh, kids would, you know, listen to that, memorize it. Uh, pretty amazing story. Highly recommended. But the thing I loved about this, I read this story, and then I saw Andy Bio of Waxy Links. And his tweet, mm -hmm. he figured out, actually, uh, a, a guy named Jess5199 figured out how to do it. Everybody thought, this is it. It's lost forever. The source code, they went to uh, uh, Buchler's husband and said, uh, do you have the computer he wrote it on? He said, no, I gave that away to charity. The source code was long gone. And, of course, they could have reverse engineered it. But fortunately... People who did have a copy of the program running on Windows XP, thanks to Jess5199, he figured out how to run it in VirtualBox uh, using, cool. using a copy of Trope Trainer from uh, archive.org and the serial number. And so it is now running. I'll turn it on again. It is now running in, uh, in virtualization. So it's saved. That is cool. Isn't that great? It's a great story. And thank you again. Another great story. Thank you to Internet Archive. This is the 2005 I'm, version of the CD-ROM. Internet Trip Archive Trip. just surprises me constantly. I'm doing research and I look at these uh, Hathi Trust and, and, and my academic things. And I'm, I'm, my last resort is, well, I wonder if Internet Archive has it. And it's amazing all that it has. Yeah. Everything is there. Old magazines like. and publications. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Uh, and I'm, I would have to think Buchler would be very relieved to know that... Uh, this is his life's work. He spent 20 years on it, that it still can be used. Really neat story. I thought I'd can pass you imagine it. what, yeah. however, what Google Voice could do with that? Oh, it'd be so much better now. But, it, yeah. but honestly, it's not as simple as 
I mean, it's a hard but thing to also do. Also, tone, tonality, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and the way the tones were written by the rabbis on the Hebrew script is uh, it's not a direct correspondence to how it's sung or played. So it's it's a very very complicated, it's nuanced. Difficult, yeah, it's very difficult. And this thing would do it in a variety of different. You could even have a young kid or an old man sing it. But yeah, if we had decent modern synthesizers working on this be very interesting. The DEC uh, program that he used uh, had only been translated to English, German, and I think one other language. So he had to actually, they had to actually kind of teach it how to sing in Hebrew, which is kind of amazing. What a story. That's awesome. Yeah, lovely story. Uh, I think, let me see. Um, uh, just looking... There's lots of stuff. There's so much stuff, but I, you know, we don't need to do all of it. Google just because he Scott. So... Go ahead and Stacy. Oh, Lindsay. I was like, a lot of it feels so marginal. I'm like, yeah, like I Google buys excited. a company called Raxium for AR. Yeah. yeah. Snap bought someone for AR. I saw this yesterday. You're on all a about small Android. AR company. The the Android statues have been removed from mm -hmm. Google. They've been getting really run down, and they stopped yeah, they putting up pretty new ones. ratty. Yeah, <laughs> filthy. Yeah, Lucian. Ron. Yeah. Ron was hoping they were just being uh, brought, you know, renovated. But I don't know if I think that day is over. They're at an undisclosed the story location. Read is they're just going to hide them for now because they're probably going to put them somewhere else. At the moment, it's uncertain what Google will do with the statues, assuming the company hasn't destroyed them. Yeah. Until then, fans will have to fondly look back at photos posted online. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle. I was getting ready to say, you think Google what were would they made destroy of? them? But they were fiberglass. They were not meant to yeah. last forever. No. They were really They're looking ready. ready. <laughs> it's, it's like putt-putt golf kind of statues. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they were. Yeah. There was, yeah, a, yeah, but it yeah. was for every version of Android. So there was mm -hmm. Kit Kat, there was a pie, there was a frozen Lollipops. yogurt, ice cream sandwich. It was outside Building Forty Four. They used to be on the main they, campus, and then they moved them to the uh, store. Okay. And do they still name things? That, I'm trying to think of the no, last time. Oh, well, technically, they don't make a big deal of it, but technically they do. So oh, I think they stopped. Oh, they do. No, no, I they stopped too. Okay, uh, Jason. Jason Howell, all about Android. Calling Jason Howell. He pops into the IRC. Ray Gun, That's like help us. Do oh. internally. They do it internally only. So Q uh, had the name Quince Tart. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's internal. Quince Tart. Okay, I see what's happening here. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's why they're internal now. Yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah. They're, well, I think the problem was... They got to one letter. There really wasn't a good dessert for I can't remember what. I forget which one it was. Was, was it yeah. quince? Quince. <laughs> Q is pretty bad. Oh. Quince tart or queen cake? Queen cake's not so bad. Um, which one was it? That was Android 10. I don't know what 11 and 12 are. You are. I have totally forgotten. I mean, they're going to run out of letters, too. Kit -Kat. Uh, Android 12 is snow cone. Because it's S. Oh, I do remember this. Yeah. Okay. So they, they didn't get rid of it. They just okay. don't make a big deal out of it anymore. Tiramisu. I believed them when they said they were going to stop. Tiramisu. <laughs> Tart. The Android 11 was red velvet cake, says uh, Jason. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah. And he says 13, <gasps> as you said. He's like, most likely tiramisu. Mm, but then you get to U and V and W and X and Y and X. What's X going to be? Uh, what kind no. of dessert? You run out of yeah, <laughs> extra gum. Extra gum. <laughs> no, That's right. No extra xylitol. Sugar gum. Xylitol. <laughs> xylitol. <laughs> I'm using Android xylitol now. No cavities. Uh, Google has settled with the four engineers it fired for unionizing. Uh, this was, uh, and then of course the employees went to the National Labor Relations Board, and uh, Google finally has settled with them. Google ran a secret campaign, according to the engineers involved uh, with workplace activism at the company, between 2018 and 2020 to crush union organizing. It was known as Project Vivian. Four of the workers were fired in late 2019. We talked about it at the time. Uh, two of those employees are, are uh, back at Google, I think. Uh, but the four others will not be re uh, none of the four fired workers will be reinstated. And of course, we don't know the terms of the settlement, but I'm thinking. Why did they call it Project Vivian? Isn't that a terrible name? 
Because it couldn't be called X Cloud. Yeah, or you can't like say that. like Project Bust the Unions. <laughs> that would be a little obvious. I mean, it's got to come up from somewhere. It was one of the Vivian. Google employees, Vivian? I, I mean, uh, are you ready for YouTube to take on over the air TV with nearly 4,000 free episodes of TV's shows? If, with commercials. Mm. With commercials. Mm. I'm down for this. Hell's Kitchen, Andromeda, Heartland. Uh, you already can watch movies with commercials on mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. I'm down for uh -huh. this. It, it makes sense. I use Plex from time to time to watch um, TV series or whatever. And I like Plex for the most part, but this live quotes TV stuff seems to be a little bit clunky. And I, I would assume YouTube slash Google would be able to do it a little bit better. I think it's just a matter of time before the networks realize that's where the kids are. Mm -hmm. and, and and just, you know, it, remember just when YouTube first it. came out, NBC was furious because Saturday Night Live skits kept ending up and they were starting to sue them and then they realized, wait a minute. Wait a minute, they're drawing <laughs> more people great in. great for business. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally where people see this. Wait a minute, okay. 8 million people yep. saw just this one yeah. segment? Yeah. yeah, so they not only gave up, I think they started posting them themselves. Yeah. Twitter has gone, uh, given us back the chronological feed. Now, in feed. now Instagram is doing the same. Although I've seen people say, just wait till you get that chronological feed you'll realize why you didn't want it all along I disagree i disagree too i love my chronological i movie. agree i like my algorithmic feed so we both can be happy oh jeez you get both well there we go features had been launched into limited testing starting in january but uh, today uh it'll roll out to the entire global base of instagram users are you looking Does, do you have it well I haven't tried it yet, but there there is one beef that I have with Instagram, and is when I launch it, it's going to have a, a post that's showing, and then it quickly jumps. Away. I know, and and you can never get back to that no, post. Like, did, oh, and now it didn't do it this time. No, I'm but like, it happened to me today. Yeah. It was a picture of my daughter's birthday. And then it's gone. And it was instantly. gone. I can never get back to it. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? It's like that was I, the scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled and scrolled. So maybe that was just a bug. Maybe okay. that'll be fixed. Maybe they fixed it now. Uh, yeah, that was it's funny because that happened to me. It too. just did it. It did just do it again. It just did it. I don't know why why it does that. So, give me chronological and fix that bug, please and thank you. Users will. Be, this is on iOS and Android, but not on the web version of Instagram. They had to give you something. Users will be alerted <laughs> to the new options, following and favorites from a pop up at the top left of the app, and under the word Instagram. From there, you can tap on the feed. That's kind of what. Uh, Twitter does. They have a little sparkle icon that no one knows what the hell is that. It took me a while to figure out that's how you get back to the chronological feed on Twitter. Uh, let me let me check this. Let me see if I what I've got here. I'm finding myself using Twitter yep. mobile less to read. Just did the same thing, by the way, to me. It showed something, disappeared. Pop away thing. Yep. Huh. So annoying. So annoying. I wonder what Instagram's uh, analytics are for people using the web interface. Well, I use it for the show all the time. That's so, so once yeah. a week for you. I use it. Yeah, I use it when I click through something. <laughs> like I, I use Instagram less and less. In fact, I, I just saw a story that they want to become a shopping mall instead of a. It's a. It and it has been slowly changing to that yeah. from a photographic sharing site. Yeah, they move. And it the just button. makes me want to use it less and less and less and less. I don't want to go to a shopping mall. They move that one but button. You buy so things. You hit it the first Instagram. thing. You Another do is reason why shop. I don't want to go <laughs> is I'll buy <laughs> That's things. That's the problem. Yeah, it works on you. Yeah, they're good ads. You have to admit they are good ads on Instagram. I'm gonna delete it. Tonight. People <laughs> buy a lot of that crap. Oh jeez, Leo. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why do you think I'm sitting on a me. stick? <laughs> <laughs> you think you think I would have bought this in a store? <laughs> you think I would have said, "Oh, that's perfect. I need a chair with a little tiny seat." <laughs> that's that's a, a tenth the size of your rear that's end. A tenth of the size of my behind. <laughs> you think? If it weren't for Instagram, I'd be sitting on this. He's Ow. been squirming <laughs> all. He's been squirming oh, all day. God, I'm so sorry. How long did this happen? When did you get this? Middle of the night. It came. Okay. <laughs> it came last week. I want to see your collection of Capitamonte. <laughs> What's Capitamonte? That's what they. That's the uh, the tacky stuff they sold on QVC. Oh, back in the day. I got a lot of Capitamonte. 
Yeah. Interesting. I'm not getting a lot of ads right now. Normally I scroll through and see. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Just be. The, that's yeah, the other yeah. problem. You're probably seeing a lot of ads not knowing it. You're thinking, oh, that's a nice picture. Oh, no. It's a stick that you sit on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think I'll get one of those. <laughs> let, let me buy that. That should be com so, comfortable. Wait, why? Help me understand why you purchased this. I mean, what what is the <laughs> selling point for this? Ah, well, he's been I, I, I genuinely, like, is it good posture? It's a baby chair. <laughs> I thought it was for grownups. <laughs> oh. No, it's, it is. It's for good posture. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, and, and again, yeah. notice he's been squirming for the last oh, it, hour. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's minutes. been he's been rocking back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> his ass is numb. Yeah, I just bought he a can't second feel one. It. This is a really sad gonna... thing. It's some sort of Stockholm syndrome, and I bought a second <laughs> one. It's like, oh, this really hurts. I need another. It looks like a, a chair photographers use that on a shoot, but yeah, it's just not like as that. portable. It's like, you know, the walking sticks you get where you unfold it yeah, and you sit in it for about a minute? That's exactly that's what, what this is. is. <laughs> that's the good, old man who goes to the parade. That's good enough yeah, his chair. for the parade yeah. or for the golf mm -hmm. course. So that's about it. <laughs> the Capo de Monte porcelain is one of the glories of Neapolitan homemade. It binds their origins to the splendor of the Bourbon dynasty. Wait, what? In 1743, okay. King Charles of Bourbon and his wife Amalia of Saxony decided to oh, found Charlie. a center for porcelain production within the Regine, Regia de Capodimonte, driven by the People desire... People would sell this stuff on QVC. Oh, this lovely nymph with yeah. a, with a, with a it's like It's like Hummel scene. figurines. It's the same. Oh, it's worse than that. Worse than yeah, Hummel. Same. Oh, like the Yadro things or whatever? That yeah, like Yadro. Has? But worse, yeah. worse, tackier. Yeah. I need to see yeah. it. Show it to me. Okay. okay. Here it comes. I, Capo. I'm sorry, yes. audio people. You asked. <laughs> Capo de Monte, which means top of the mountain, right? I don't know. Capo de Monte. Oh, here's a beautiful $350 floral arrangement. It's just the kind of thing uh -huh. your grandmother bought, and then you think oh, you're going to yeah. sell it at her estate, and nobody wants it. No. Actually, we had no, these no, when I, I was a kid. Bucks. We had these exact flowers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Here's a. This is for you. Stacy, if you send me that phone back, I will send you <laughs> Pulcinella with fruit. It is a no, gracious no, figurine no, no. with fruit punch made. Ew, that looks like you too. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a nightmare. It's scary. I think, though, it might be my new profile picture. Yeah. <laughs> Go for that. Wow. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's, hours. Uh, they would spend hours selling this stuff on QVC. <laughs> I'd watch QVC if that's what they would sell. You know what? QVC is more modern now. All the like tech companies are getting into oh. real life shopping. It's actually like kind Twitch, of kind of scary. Amazon. I uh, yeah. somebody was saying, oh, they've got the uh, Xbox Series X, which I've had a hard time finding on uh, QVC. I went. I went to their website. They're selling it for twice the twice retail the price. price. Yeah. My mom's is a QVC shopper. I don't think it's a... She quite enjoys you know, it. I'm I'm about to talk to a woman. Oh, oh, you guys know her. Um, Hold on. Uh, it's one of the co-founders of iRobot. Oh, Helen yeah. Helen Greiner. Yeah. She has a new company called Turtill, which is a... It's like a Roomba for your garden that does weeding. It's a three ninety nine dollars robot. I'm very excited cool. about it. But they're going to launch on Home Shopping Network, which is basically like QVC. That's so. cool. So there's money. So right now on QVC, it's Gourmet Holiday. At the moment, oh. if you go to QVC.com, yeah. you can go in and then click on to what's now. It's Gourmet Holiday. You can get Just Bagels from New York City. Oh, that's good. You can get uh, Landy's Cafe, uh, cups of meatballs in sauce. I have now, uh, by the way, changed my avatar <laughs> <laughs> on, my, on the Discord. Oh, so uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. It is... <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> Looks just like me. Horrifying. <laughs> this dude is so weird. <laughs> this this yeah. show, I think, is to bring it back. <laughs> Caparimonte, the head of the mountain. Uh, let's play uh, the uh, sound, and we'll do. It is your totally your fault, but then Lee, but it was really Steph. Uh, but Stephanie. it brought joy. What's to her the name's here? Faults. 
Yeah, Stacy. That lady. That lady over on my right here, because she said, oh, Jeff, fully knowledgeable, I think, now in hindsight as to the impact. What's Capo de Monte? <laughs> And then it I sounded have to delicious. <laughs> it's time for the Google, you know. The Google change log. See how fast we can get through this. Android 13, the next one. What did we, what did we say that is? Tiramisu? Tiramisu is what Possibly. allegedly. Will ask your permission to send notifications. As well it should. It includes, so apps will have to ask, oh, We'll have to, but, well, yeah, Apple does this. I, I didn't realize that this wasn't on Android. Android does it too. Allow yeah. app to send you notifications. Allow, don't allow. Uh, it makes you, it, it gives you the option to manage it. Like when you get a notification, you're like, God, why is HBO Max sending me notifications? You just open it up and you're like, stop that. This is now a requirement. Right. I guess oh. not, I guess you could do it before if an app was nice, but they didn't have to do it. Uh Apps targeting Android 13 will now need to request the notification permission from the user before posting anything at all. So okay. that is a good improvement. That'll be coming mm -hmm. soon. It's already in the uh, dev versions of Android 13. Speaking of Android 13, there is a new search in town. Pixel Launcher Search uh, is at least testing, showing results from Google Photos. So when you search now, you know how you... Do a search on your Android phone for an app. Mm -hmm. It will also, if you put a name in, search for photos of that person. It'll it'll search like across a whole bunch of domains. Yes, in the phone now. as well as Google uh, Photos. So, searching for screenshots will surface a Google Photos branded Wait, carousel. He said it'll it'll search outside of Google Photos. No, I think this says it's going to no, search your phone. Your phone. Oh, okay. Which, but it'll it, include though? photos. Okay, that's interesting. Especially if you actually tag people in your photos. Yeah. So, there. Google Photos is updating its library and sharing tabs to make photos easier to find as well. Shortcuts to your screenshots. So, uh, that's a layout change, basically, to the interface. Don't be surprised when you see that. Um, I appreciate them doing this. As I haven't really cared for... It's not a great layout. interface, uh -huh. yeah. I like this service being pretty quick on backing up and so forth and allowing me to just get my images off of them fairly quickly, but still just navigating on the phone is... Ugh. Also an update coming for the Google Home app. Simpler controls, improved privacy. I'm sure Stacy likes that. We talked about it on the show coming out tomorrow. What'd you Ooh. say? We said we liked it. It's simple. We like the privacy. And apparently they're also going to change the event feed. So it'll be a little bit more. It'll sort them and group useful. them. That's always yeah. been a problem of mine because I'll get a thousand. If I if I go in the backyard, I get a thousand notifications. There's somebody in your backyard. <laughs> so now it will kind of uh, sort them into a group. Things that happen within a short space of time into one thing. The Android app will finally let you delete the last 15 minutes of your search history, just like iPhone users. It came to the iOS app <laughs> last summer. Mm. But for some reason, Google denied it to Android users. They're now bringing it. So why well, would you want to delete the last 15 minutes of your search history? Depends on who's looking at Let's your Let's say you just murdered someone. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> not the, not Great the example, Mrs. That. Higginbotham. Of course. <laughs> Uh, you could so so the the settings are now thirty six months, eighteen months, three months, or fifteen minutes. I thought That's there interesting. Was a, I thought there was a so I I, I was talking to a friend of mine who um, in his kid's school, his teenager's school, yeah, he had his laptop, and um, it was on the screen. And he started typing a letter, as you know, when it will auto complete. Yeah, like, I, I, right. P. Oh no! Pornhub fired. Mm. Just because he typed the letter P. That's uh, yep. sad. And mm. it came up with. Did Pornhub. he click? He must have clicked. You have to return. But that's those keyboards. Believe me, it's easy to. I think a kid was that. using it. I think a kid was using the computer. Yeah. And did that so often. Uh, so I went through. I went not before that. I heard. I heard the story. By the way, I just happened to go through my entire alphabet. Just to see what and one letter will do. Yeah. What every letter will do. Yeah. 
Um, oh, yeah, that's boy, that's bad. Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, yeah. My, oh, mine goes to fizz.org. <laughs> <laughs> mine says press Democrat in Petaluma weather. Boy, my I've got says photos. Really excited. Pinboard.in, Pam and Tommy, Panic Nova, Parks and Rec, Anna Diarmas. Pam and Tommy could I get totally you fired. I think that could get you gone. <laughs> Photographer Santa Rosa, Putin speech, and Paul Thomas Anderson. I love it. Lisa and I were having a fight. We were watching uh, Anna de Armas, who is, of course, a wonderful actor in the late James Bond movie. She's in a brand new movie on, uh, I think it's on Netflix. It's mm. terrible. Hulu. It's on Hulu. Hulu with Ben Deep Affleck, Deep River. Water. Uh, <laughs> it's terrible. Don't watch it. So good you know the name of it. But I, I said, oh, yeah. She said, who's this woman? I said, oh, she was in Parks and Rec. <laughs> she wasn't. I was watching. She's from Cuba. You so, think of Aubrey Plaza. I confused Ooh, her with Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza. Plaza. Exactly. I love her. And so I'm desperately searching Parks and Rec and at Armas. And you know what? There are no search results for that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew you were right. <laughs> this is my fairly recent. All of this is like the last day or two history. So, Putin yeah. speech, huh? So this is why you might want to delete your search history before you go teach. <laughs> well, I'm just not going to do any other letters. That's all I could tell you right now. Google is moving. I'm going through them all. They're good. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of, it's like a tour down memory lane. It is. Oh, I remember like when I was. the last day of A web for Amazon. <laughs> B for book finder. C for calendar. D for dark sky. E for eBay. Oh my F God! For I typed A and I got Anna de Armas Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it two different ways. <laughs> Wait, you're not using. Here's the difference. If you use Google, Google new. she's on there. I swear she is. <laughs> Google's wrong. That's wrong, Google. <laughs> oh, and now when I type C, I get Capo de Monte. See, Google's different because Google listens over enough time. Right. And it learns. So so N is New York Times, W is Washington Post, T is The Guardian. Only because oh, it yeah. learns. Is that Twitter? Are. Yeah. Well, see. he's... Uh, it's a good question, Stacey. Yeah. Oh, I type F. Sorry, I you was like... Why You'll appreciate this, F. I mean, Stacey, when I type F, I get Fun Fetty. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> finally, excellent options. Finally, Google is moving the movies and TV app... App tab <laughs> punchy. What <laughs> you're just trying to get through this one more time? Let's start that over. <laughs> Try it again. Finally, you know, and if finally. you could only if, you're, if your ass weren't numb right now, you'd probably be fine. <laughs> it's That's true. what you're thinking. You're thinking, I can't sit here any longer. <laughs> My ass is so numb. I'm, I'm, this, is, this is a great way to get us out in time. I like it. Let's do I'm it. Okay. Brand new yeah, I don't know. Google's learning the movie and TV's tap on the Play Store to Google TV. And that's the Google change log. <laughs> <sighs> oh, wait. There was. Oh, no. That's. <sighs> Can I send you, you really another more change logs? Chairs? You really? No, another no. chair. She wants to send me a different chair. <sighs> what do you want to send me? Go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to send you another one of those chairs just in case. This is you the know, that one QOR360. <laughs> and the and it's all about, it's designed by a cardiologist. <laughs> that, that probably no, should have been a giveaway. <laughs> that a cardiologist your designed blood pressure? this chair. <laughs> It'll give you a heart attack. <sighs> More like designed by a proctologist. Yeah, well, so no, if it had been a butt guy, I would have been, uh, yeah. that probably would have been a better chair. <laughs> Mm, do I care about any of these other? What phone does uh, POTUS carry? I, I, just you guys might know. Take a look at the pictures. Yeah, it's a, it's an Apple iPhone. Tw uh, iPhone twelve. Uh, the presidential seal 13 case. Thirteen Pro Max. I like the case. That's probably more than just an everyday Some case. Good old I RFID. So. But that, now, if so. you look at that yeah. uh, camera, Barricage. don't you think, Stacy? That's a dead giveaway. That that square. Yeah. Look at here's the same camera uh, on an iPhone. 12, but I think the 13 looks very similar. So it's either a 12 or 13, but there's the same camera, right? That square yeah. square camera. That's it, right? Looks like it. Yeah. Nailed it. Here, show the top. Can you see anything from the bevel bezel? Show your uh, top. Yeah, look at the top of that. No, I think camera. this is all the same. Oh, of my... Oh, no, no. I think that's his case. Yeah, it has little grills I on think the he's top. got a... That's a special CIA 
NSA. Yeah. That's a something, something. Got, There's yeah. nothing. That's he's got a. Oh, you know what that is? That's a cover. That's a, a screen cover. I bet you on a hinge. Because you wouldn't oh. want people to read over Privacy's your shoulder. Me I up. would. I would I'm try right. to like look over sure. his shoulder when oh, he's yeah. on. Sure, like, of course I you would. would. I don't care that much. Yeah. The Secret Service would be like, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> I am actually surprised. Remember when uh, this all came up for the first time uh, that I remember with Obama, who had a BlackBerry in 2008 when he came into the uh, White House 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, NSA took one look at it and said, sir, you cannot carry a BlackBerry. Yep, got to go. Uh, they gave him, a, and it felt bad for him, a Windows phone that was specially mm -hmm. modified to be safe, uh, you know, secure. Mm -hmm. And ever it's since... Secure because by obscurity. Well, I guess they had... You know, by 2008, there were iPhones, but honestly, they were, BlackBerry probably would have been the first thing you'd expect Obama to be carrying. Because mm -hmm. uh, they have the enterprise presence, at least back then. Anyway. Right. Yeah, and a lot, everybody yeah, in government iPhone, had a BlackBerry. The first iPhone came everybody. out in 07. It did. So he, was, he, so he entered office January 20th, 2009, a day I shall never forget. And then Trump came along and used any bloody phone he wished. Yeah, wasn't that interesting? He fought it. He fought it. And in fact, I think he did use an iPhone. We know because he was tweeting from an iPhone. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first image from the Webb telescope? Yeah, we, this is actually kind of cool. Uh, the Webb telescope was, of course, the uh, space telescope that's sitting at Lagrange Point, very distant, more almost a million kilometers from the Earth. So it will not be repairable. Uh, so they took a big chance. It had to fold up into a tiny little origami thing so it could be launched into space. It's been, ever since its launch several months ago, unfolding and deploying, and it has done so with remarkable uh, success, not one problem. And now the very first uh, image, as they've aligned the mirror now, uh, is of a, quote, very boring star, according to NASA. Uh, you see the, you, see so the um, you would know about this, Ant, the, uh, the star lines coming off of that. That's because of the aperture mm -hmm. on the camera. Yep. Tight but, aperture to cut down the light, and it's the blades that you see that makes the little starry uh, extensions there. Yeah, and it's it's false color because it's an infrared photo, but here's the most interesting thing about this. And by the way, this is not the final quality. They're still aligning. They have a way to go. But here's this is a star uh, known as HD 84406. It's 100 times fainter than a star that could be seen with a human eye. But the thing that's most interesting about this image, I don't know if I can get a bigger... Uh, picture would be nice if I could. If you, you go to NASA, Chromebook, they, just... they will. But the most interesting thing is those little dots, those are not stars, those are galaxies. Isn't that what? Awesome? Inspiring. And if you look, Isn't that awesome? You can look Son. at this galaxy here, for instance. It's, uh, it's a flat plate. It's a spiral arm galaxy. That's why they don't, they're not pinpoints. They're actually entire galaxies. Sun. Isn't that amazing? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So this telescope uh, everybody's very excited. This was a very successful deployment. They're not quite there yet. When they are, we start getting images. Didn't it take a selfie of itself? It did. There's also a <laughs> selfie. Here's the selfie. Uh, <laughs> a picture back down. Those are the octagons, one, two, three, four, five, six hexagons that uh, unfolded to form one single mirror. And so there's, I think, 18 of them, John. Is that right? So they had to align these hexagonal segments so that they would all focus on a pinpoint and that's what that image is but now there's still very very small nanometer scale adjustments they have to make so that they're exactly converged mm. uh, the, according to jane rigby web operations project scientist at goddard the telescope's performance is so far everything we dared to hope the engineering images we saw today are as sharp and as crisp as the images that Hubble can take, but are a wavelength of light that is totally invisible to Hubble. So mm. this is making the invisible universe snapping into very, very sharp focus, performing even better than expected. That is unbelievable. Yay! This Science! Is, the whole story of this is so amazing. They started figuring out that we needed this telescope like in 1996. And every year they had to fight for their budget. It was like $10 billion. It was way over budget. Every year they'd go to Congress and they'd be like, please, 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 please. I mean, it's just... It's such an inspirational story. It's wonderful. Or yep. disgusting, depending on how you feel. And I'm told by people like John who follow this and uh, Rod Pyle and uh, Tarek Malik, who do our space show this week in space, oh, yeah. that the things that we will learn from this telescope 
are unheard of. We don't even know what we're going to learn about the origins of the universe. Uh, there's going to be amazing discoveries coming out of this telescope. So this is a really uh, very, very important scientific project, and it looks to be successful. Great picture. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break, and you can give us your picks and numbers and thing of the week when we come back this week in Google, brought to you by Wealthfront. You know, nowadays, there's a, dozens of apps that make it easy to start trading. But just because it's easy <laughs> doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Investing is, is hard, but Wealthfront makes it easy to invest, easy to grow your savings with a diversified portfolio that balances your other riskier bets. So you can, you know, if you want to buy AMC, go ahead. But, but, but Wealthfront will let you create a portfolio that will build your wealth. You can start investing in no time with Wealthfront's classic portfolio or customize it, make it your own with things you care about. They have socially responsible funds. They have technology funds. They've got crypto if you want to do crypto. Wealthfront was designed by financial experts to help you turn your good ideas into great investments without the hassle of doing everything yourself. If you don't want to spend hours, hundreds of hours trying to lower your tax bill, they can do that for you. Not sure how to rebalance your portfolio or even why you should or what rebalancing is? Well, they do that for you automatically as well. Wealthfront now has 20... We started talking about Wealthfront many years ago. They have now grown to $28 billion in assets. That's a huge... I think it's 10 times bigger than when we started talking about them. Helping nearly half a million people build their wealth. All you need is $500 to get started. Grow your wealth the easy way. Let Wealthfront do the work for you. And the best part is it's so easy. It's such a great app. 4.9 out of 5 stars in the Apple App Store. Wealthfront. Go to Wealthfront.com slash twig. Get your first $5,000 managed free for life. Then that's a way to start building your wealth. Wealthfront.com slash twig. W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash twig. Start building your wealth now. You will thank me. I will be long gone. But you will say, boy, I'm glad Leo told me about Wealthfront. Wealthfront.com slash twig to get started today. Uh, Stacy, Stacy, every time I look at my beautiful Thermomix, I think of you as I'm making mashed potatoes, <laughs> as I'm making risotto. <laughs> but then oh, oh. I look over next to it at my June oven, the original $1,500 June oven. Ooh, it's getting really? a little ratty, a little long in the tooth. Oh, yeah. And then I remembered, wait a minute, Stacy says they've improved the June. And and my wife said, "Let's get a new one." <laughs> oh. Yeah, I got I got a new one. I mean, because like love it? <laughs> we had had ours. I do love. I still love it. They um they took the scale out, and it's only yeah, like I five or six hundred dollars now. But does that matter that they took the uh, scale out? I mean, no, because apparently it didn't automatically incorporate the scale. You had oh. to actually do it. Oh well, that's not so, good. You're yeah. not going to notice. Um, but the, I'll tell you, it, it took a while for Lisa to get convinced. But she uh, loves it enough. She said, yeah, let's get the new one. Oh, yeah. yeah. We we got a new one and we still, I mean, we used ours like probably four or five times a day, every single day. So, um, but the new one doesn't have the cool knob. That's that's another oh. cost savings. You know, I don't mind um, that so, so much. What's funny is it screen. runs Android. That's an Android, little Android interface running there. Mm -hmm. it, it goes is. out on the net. It looks up recipes. She, what turned her around was she put Brussels sprouts in. And, and it said, are those Brussels sprouts? Would you like me to cook them? And she said, yes. And 20 minutes later, perfect Brussels sprouts. Did it add bacon? No. It's oh, impossible to have a perfect Brussels fail. sprout. No, she was, she was you like can't you. can't have such a thing. She was not a believer. No, no, I don't believe it. She believes today. She does. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, she loves them. Grab yourself a replacement. I mean, we did. We, did. we don't regret it. You can use it as an air fryer now, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, you I use, have to we have baskets. All, we use it all the time. So thank you. What is your new thing? What else should I buy? Oh, by the way, yes. I have to, okay, this is before my thing. Remember the cocktail shaker? Yeah. It turns out they didn't send me the small gasket and they did. Oh. I just emailed them. I was like, hey. Yeah. So I remember that was why my that. thing, and now it's perfect. Oh, good. 
So they did we're send back. the gasket. You just didn't see it. Yeah, or? they were super. I no, they didn't. They sent me two of the big gaskets instead of a big oh, gasket. Yeah, oh, I have okay. small gaskets. On my I didn't get one shaker. of those. Oh, good, because we we threw so, it away. Yeah, you're fine. So uh, <gasps> no, we didn't. You did? No, it is it is. <laughs> however, up in the cupboard, waiting to make a martini. Now you should use the, it for the next. Uh, Garage sale. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Use it, it beforehand. I bought it right when you talked about it. I bought it for Christmas for Lisa. It didn't come, but unfortunately, her birthday is one month later, so she had it for her birthday. We haven't had a chance to use it. Maybe tonight. That yeah. reminds me. We should do it. Could you imagine? Okay, so. the Laporte garage sale. Oh, you don't have to imagine it. Aunt already knows yeah, all about I, it. I, I love it. <laughs> it. Happens usually every January. So. <laughs> it's uh, in the conference room. I just bring a lot of crap. I in. love it. Yeah. There's one coming Jeff, up. Maybe he'll got... mail you a device and include some <laughs> other unsolicited objects. <laughs> I shed gadgets as I go down the street. They just, <laughs> yeah, they just fall <laughs> off of me. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. I actually saw your article, uh, or maybe it was a tweet, about uh, these new Wi-Fi routers from Eero. Yes. So this is a 2,000-word review, and I feel like it didn't even cover all the things wow. one should cover. That's wow. how crazy. Well, so, there's one thing the big, right up top, 6E, right? Right. So that's because I'm not a gadget nerd. I'm just a nerd nerd. I'm mostly excited by the fact that this year we're getting... Wi-Fi 6E, which, to be honest, is not exciting in the sense that we can use it today because there's not a lot of 6E capable devices. But mm -hmm. it's awesome because we have 1,200 megahertz of unlicensed spectrum for Wi-Fi that we can use, which is amazing. So, where, where, 6E, is it six gigs? Where is the 6E spectrum? It's in this. It's it's technically in the, like the five point six to something, but it's in the. It, it's called the six gigahertz band. So it's a very so. high. So. You know, first I thought when they started doing uh, five gigahertz, I thought, well, that's going to be so high, it's not going to go anywhere. But that's mm -hmm. actually turns out to be its its real benefit because it doesn't go through walls. You don't get interference from neighbors uh, or anybody or yourself. In six, <laughs> it's matter. even better. Yeah, because you get these wide channel widths. So oh. this Eero it supports a hundred and sixty megahertz channels, which basically means you can pack. A whole bunch of information in those megahertz and just send it all in one go like a really big dump truck full of stuff full of data um how, how much is anyway, it 160 megahertz wow. wide channels so um, the entire fm band is, is 20 megahertz <laughs> yeah the entire am band i think is 200 kilohertz so that's a lot <laughs> you could get all the yeah. am fm stations on there and then some wow wow that's pretty good. But like 5G, it's up there, so it, it does attenuate. It, it doesn't go through walls. Um, this is a short distance for prime usage. But so there's a but Orbi, Linksys, uh, uh, Asus, they all have these routers out. So this is just the latest is Eero's routers. And I, I like Eero, I'm testing though. them now. Yeah. Miss Stacey, a I've lot of people do. They're user friendly. Yeah. I've heard you say a couple of times, short distance. So what exactly is, is considered short distance when you're talking about this particular wavelength? It depends on your environment, but okay. think a couple of feet. Um, well, think, think not tens of feet, mm -hmm. uh, like 10 feet. It's think a room. 10 feet. It's basically a room. Just a room. It's, okay. Yeah. So, but that's good because you don't, if you have a neighbor in an apartment next to you or even a house nowadays, people blast their Wi-Fi. Yeah. Th that won't interfere with yours. Okay. Do you have any 6E devices? I do. I have the phone you sent me. Oh, it was literally the only. Funny you should it ask. It was the only 6G device. I actually knew that. I was that. so excited. Because throughout the review, it says, when testing speeds on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 in my dining room, <laughs> and a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 has a Wi-Fi 6E capable radio, that's good. I'm glad I'm, that makes it even better that you got that. Because otherwise... You so, would you wouldn't be able to test, be able to it. test it. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good yeah. point. Is most people do not have devices that will take advantage. Yeah, you don't need to rush out and buy this. But two years, I, maybe. I, I highly soon. You know, here's you should buy it if you've got like, if you have a press it, like your Wi-Fi five router just mm -hmm. broke, then mm -hmm. sure go yeah, get this. Go um, 
or get a 6E capable router. You can decide if you want to. I this. would because it's a the, standard now, and so devices will start coming out. Just as, oh, uh, yeah. You know, most you phones now are Wi Fi 6. It just took a little while. But, mm -hmm. but don't, don't, I mean, again, you don't have to rush. If you're going to upgrade your computer or phone and you're going to have a 6G, I would say whenever you get your first 6G device that you're really stoked about, you know, then you can go buy your first, or sorry, 6 E. Echo. Six E device, <laughs> <laughs> then go and get this um, to go with it, or go and get a six E capable router. Now, I will say, like the Orbeez and the Linksys, both of those are like fifteen hundred, twelve hundred dollars, and they're multi multi gigabit. Like I think it's eight and eleven gigabits per, respectively. Eero's done a nice job in the sense that if you don't have if you have a gigabit connection this is going to be fine for you if you've got a small office you know go up um if you've got machines capable of transferring data inside your lan or it would be your wan um or it would be your w lan sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like let me get there <laughs> then i guess but it, it seems like overkill like the cool thing for this story is I think Eero's probably taking the right tack, recognizing what we have available as bandwidth for consumers and serving something that is, it's still kind of pricey. And it, You know what's though? It's about the same price as the older Euros. So they're kind of hitting- I'm so pissed that I have the older Euros. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I think they said- a lot of money for- When Eero came out, they were considered really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has gone up and gone beyond them now. And Eero's just kind of stayed at that $500 uh, price point, which is good. And so, and they also launched, I didn't review these, but they launched the six plus and then they lowered their price on their regular six ones. So, and honest, it, the, the, the final thing I'll say about this, cause I really was curious and have been for a while, Nick Weaver, who is the CEO of Eero, he said, Hey, you know what? I think five years is about the right time for transfer, like switching out. Your I'd say that's right. Routers. I'd agree with him. And I'm, I agree with him. Because yeah. technologies change. Uh, unfortunately, security issues crop up. Sometimes they don't get patched. It's mm. probably a good idea every every four or five years to update your router. I agree. So there you go. How that fast was, that was is uh, how fast did you do a bandwidth test on the fine Samsung Galaxy um, Flip? I did, and you know I can't get above five hundred megabits That's per second fine. anywhere in my house on the device, That's which is yes, awesome. it is Smoking. it is fine. But I do you have, have a gigabit. gigabit. Yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi is almost always half what the nominal speed mm -hmm. is. Yeah, oh, internally the... Mm, it's not a rule, but it's very common. Seems to be the yeah, average. Average. I'd say 50 to 60% yeah. mm -hmm. of, of uh, But it is, wired. so I will say these are like two and a half to three X faster than my existing, like nice. all of my existing devices ran yeah. two to two or Very nice. Two and a half to so three times faster. That's been a big change. Phones have gotten, uh, even on... Uh, uh, 5G, but even on Wi-Fi, they've gotten much faster. It used to be the phone, even if you could get a 500 megabit yeah. connection, couldn't do more than 100 or 200. They really, uh, they put better chips in there and better radios, and they're much faster than they used to be. Do you know if the iPhones have an upload limit? Because my husband noticed when he was testing on his iPhone, he could not get more than like 120 something or 130. And I didn't know. Oh, if they may. That was a they may be a. Throttled. You know what? Let me, let me look. I don't think I've ever seen more than a hundred megabits up. So maybe there is a limit. Yeah. That may. I, that may be. I don't know. Well, why, why would they do? That? Why would you throttle up? Well, yeah. you don't. For one thing, you don't want to saturate the connections because if you do, then if you're using the maximum upstream, your downstream stops. Mm -hmm. So, but it also probably is to save money. I don't know. I'll investigate. That's a good question. I do not know. I'm actually pretty excited because um, the new Macs, the Mac Studios, and uh, and some of the M1s support 10 gigabit Ethernet. Mm -hmm. And we, mm -hmm. as it turns out, have 10 gigabit symmetric eth uh, Internet from Sonic, which nothing we've had has been able to use. <laughs> but, I, oh, yeah. but, but I now can... So I asked uh, Russell, I said, is there any way I can get a 10 gigabit drop in my office? He said, yes. So we'll see. I will be... Uh, so you're going to load a bunch of shows simultaneously well, he in said, It doesn't really matter because there's no website going to be able to keep up anyway. <laughs> but, you know, faster is always better. We are at the point now where we're really as fast as any website ever is going to be, I think. But, yeah, That's if you're awesome. downloading something from a very fast site. Actually, you know what he said? Uh, 
that the Google Drive storage, we are in, our uh, editors have 10 gigabit at their desktops as well. And he's noticed that the Google Drive uploads are very fast. Not 10 mm -hmm. maybe, but, but much fat, gigabits faster. So yeah, you can, you can. Uh, so here we go. Support Scooter X on the jab from our chat room iPhone Wi-Fi specifications, channel bandwidth. Does this say what this, this just says what they can do. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, maximum data rate. It does look like on BGNN, the, the, well, is this up or down? Well, I don't know. Hmm. I'll have to. I'll yeah, have I was to. Uh, say. It's hard to tell. I have to look at this more carefully. It, it may just be a weird thing on his phone. I don't know. But you should you try it with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip Three. See how it works. Um, I did. What's the upstream? It works really well. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me go back to my. That's I do right. not realize off the top of my head. Um, I, upstream was. What? Hold on. Which is the right one? Uh, 341 wow. megabits per second up. Going up? Wow. Yeah. Good. Wow. I was like, I could film a movie on my yeah. Samsung Stream Galaxy Z Fold 3. Stream it live. Jeff Jarvis, your number of the week. Well, I'll, I'll let you see if you want to do this. Um, I'll, 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 a quick mention for a quick plug. Our friend near at Weissblatt, her book, Tech Lash, when she was on the show, cost $100. It comes out tomorrow on paperback at $25. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. It's a very good book. Highly recommend it. It is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to do this, Leo, or not, but uh, Cory Booker, my senator, just gave an amazing minute uh, during the hearings that's going around video like crazy online. I did uh, see what he said. Let's play a little bit of this. This is during the... Uh, Katanji Brown ja uh, Jackson um, hearings for Supreme Court. Booker, of course, is uh, uh, taking her testimony, among others, among the other senators. Here was what he had to say about her experience so far. As Langston Hughes let, wrote, oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet, but yet must be the land where everyone is free. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me, but I swear this oath, America will be. That is the story of how you got to this desk. You and I and everyone here, generations of folk who came here and said, America, I'm Irish, you may say, no, Irish or dogs need to ply, but I'm gonna show this country that I can be free here. I can make this country love me as much as I love it. Chinese Americans first forced into mere slave labor, building our railroads, connecting our country, saw the ugliest of America, but they were gonna build their home here and say, America, you may not love me yet, but I'm gonna make this nation live up to its promise and hope. Hmm. LGBTQ Americans from Stonewall women to Seneca hidden figures who didn't even get their play until some Hollywood movie finally talked about them and how they were critical for us defying gravity all of these people loved America and so you faced insults here that were shocking to me well actually not shocking not shocking oh she's tearing up yeah but you are here because of that kind of love and nobody's taken this away from me. So you got five more folk to go through. <laughs> five more of us. And then you can sit back and let us have all the debates. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a well-charted Senate floor because it's not going to stop. They're going to accuse you of this and that. Heck, in honor of your person who shares your birthday, you might be called a communist. But don't worry, my sister. Don't worry. God has got you. And how do I know that? Because you're here. And I know what it's taken for you to sit in that seat. He said, your ancestors would be proud. Um, that was a nice speech. Now, I'm cynical, and I know some others are, and it obviously was a prepared mm. speech. But still, beautiful. Really beautiful. Mm. And, and Langston, also, Hughes, Langston Hughes poetry started. Yeah, with. I love that poem. That's a beautiful poem. Way to go. Like saying, you know, you've had a really crappy time yeah. and people have asked you a tons yeah. of yeah. really crap questions. Let mm -hmm. me just give you 
X amount of time and just build you back up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. way to way to be unselfish, yeah. Corey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I was thinking that probably once they get to the Supreme Court in their chambers, I mean, now they've crossed that final hurdle. It, that's it. They don't have to worry for the rest of their lives about anything so bad ever again. And I imagine they sit around going, wasn't that a bitch? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, that was bad. Uh, but you made it. You made it through. Well, we hope she does. Um, uh, she's definitely qualified. Uh, good. Thank you, Jeff. Good. No, I don't think I'm going to play that, but it was a it was a good idea anyway. Good. What else you got? Good pool. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, just like what? Huh? No. I, was, I was very confused there. I didn't well, you, know what was going on. you kept saying as if I had a choice. <laughs> now, you may not want to do this, but... <laughs> well, you could have said we don't do politics in the show, of course, the case. or you could have said, no, 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 Jeff, I really want that Benedict Evans advertising column for you to go through it in detail. <laughs> no, we're going to skip Ooh. that one this week. Right. How about you, Ant? You got a thing? Uh, mm. Yeah. One thing is something totally random and odd that I do on Saturdays or Sundays, and it's called L.A. Flights. And it is a group of gentlemen that go to the L.A. Uh, airport, set up a couple cameras and live stream a couple days a week for like 12 hours straight of just watching the airplanes come in and wow. leave and they talk about it. And it's beautiful video quality, beautiful audio. Uh, I don't know how they're doing it, <laughs> but I'm sure Alex Lindsay knows. How I doing know it. who knows. Johnny yeah. Jet knows. They Johnny hang out at the yeah. In and Out Burger yeah. outside LA Airport, yeah. <clears throat> which has a very good view oh, of the gosh. runway. It's, I think that's what Johnny said was the In and Out. It is yeah. great. I love watching it. And I'll watch it for hours and just, it's like great white noise for me. And I said, I should share this because I, I do this every You must day. be a member because I can't, some of this is members only content. Oh, I guess I am. Yeah. I may be paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look. Look at that. I can't see any I of guess this. I need to look. Oh, I'm, no wonder. I'm in the members only section. Here we go. I need to look. Uh, but yeah, I like LA flights on YouTube. And then um, <laughs> next is a pick that came from a friend of mine and uh, another listener of Twig. It's the Sound of Merlin. I've never seen this app, and I thought it was quite... <laughs> awesome because now I just go outside and hold my phone up and it will help identify the birds that are making all of the daggum noise at <laughs> 5 a.m. in the morning. I'll give you a hint. They're all crows. Every damn one of them. Well, it ain't that. It ain't crows. No, it's the songbirds, <laughs> it's man. Uh, yeah. I get those. I get the stupid turkey and um, <laughs> of course the hawks and stuff are out there. It's always, Do you get doves? We have some doves. Yeah, those doves. Oh, look. She's got. And this was go. Her, she can right. tell you about every you one said, of them. When you share this, that, this, this is only like, for visual though. Twentieth so. anniversary <laughs> uh, gift is a bird <laughs> diagram. <laughs> this comes from Cornell, actually. They yeah, did. This Cornell. is uh, really cool. Yeah. 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 It has like three or four different components. You have a visual component. You also have an audio component that you have to download. And of course, it's going to want your location mm-hmm. in the app to sort of help you know figure out what's is, what exactly is around you but that's uh it, the sound of um the merlin app android i will tell you y'all i have used the merlin app it's one of my you know i've got like my identify mountains identify plants mm-hmm. i also have the merlin app. oh really you, it is awesome you have it a thing about nice. identifying stuff i like to know what's around cool. me it's I like fun it. yeah that's very cool and finally, <laughs> lastly, I just want to give a shout out to somebody we all know and love. Is it, it felt good because I was like, oh, I've had that and she hasn't had it yet. But Miss um, Lisa Laporte was sharing a wine called Black Girl Magic. And it is a great, great, great um, tasting wine. This, this is a red blend. I've had their Riesling, but it's the McBride Sisters. And I just... Want to show them some love? It's two some, two black two women black out women. of uh, Paso Robles. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's done. funny we uncorked it for the <laughs> Jackson Brown hearings. <laughs> That's what she was telling me this morning. She's like, "Yeah, I'm going to have some wine." <laughs> she know. says, "Watching Katanji Brown Jackson's hearings for a Supreme Court seat now. Looking forward to a confirmation. A little black girl magic. Check That's it good. out. Good. That's a little sisterhood. Yeah, going Check through the it airwaves. Out. It's uh, it was quite wine. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, nice." She I've was very pleased. To... She said, should I tweet this? I said, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. And uh, and then we were waiting to see if you reacted. Because if you approved, then we know it was okay. <laughs> well, I also just, 
I dig Miss Lisa because she's helping me get my my wine game. She up, is, you know, because I'm, I'm still new to all yeah. of this stuff. And yeah. and that particular Riesling we were discussing, um, it threw me off a bit because when I nosed it, it smelled like um, fresh cut grass. That's good. It. I didn't like that. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, this is this is not my thing." You have thing. a very good nose. That's but I great. had it with fish, and it was delicious. delicious. Yeah. Oh, it was delicious. Yeah. But the nose just sort of threw me off. Yeah. Thank you, Aunt Pruitt, hands-on photography. What do you be covering this uh, next couple of weeks here? Well, we got a lot going on. I'm checking out uh, an app. Uh, Luminaire Neo is is up on deck. And a Ukrainian some, company mm -hmm, from so Skylum. Nice. Yep. And um, we have our Moon Photography Challenge. So, folks, go Ooh. ahead and keep sending in your photos. I've been seeing a bunch come in. Make sure it's something fairly new. Don't send me something you shot last year. The whole point <laughs> of these challenges are for you to get off your butt and go shoot. So, send me your Moon photos to hop at Twitch. Speaking of butt. Yeah, this dude. <laughs> How's yours got? doing? Oh, I am so ready to get out of here. Can you hurry up, please? I got to get, oh my God, I'm sitting on a stick and it's no fun. But yeah. Stay. <laughs> Thank you. Twit.tv slash HOP. And don't forget, some big events coming up. And is our community manager in the uh, Discord, mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. uh, our club Discord. And uh, it, we, let's see, this week we've got Stacy's Book Club. That's tomorrow. We're going to talk Unauthorized Bread by our very own favorite, Mr. Corey Doctorow. Nice. Next week will be... 9 a.m. That's right, 9 a.m. Pacific time in the Discord. And then uh, next week we'll have Mr. Paul Therott with the AMA, same time on Thursday. And then coming up after that, Look finally, at that. Look finally, at that. Look at there. it won't be any more panic. Mr. Jeff Jarvis and I are going to. So, so what is a, uh, uh, what do you expect of me, sir? <laughs> um, just be you. <laughs> Cran <laughs> little Cranky. song, little dance, little TikTok, little uh -oh. song. Oh, just be you. <laughs> just be you. I'll have I'll have um, some some questions for you, and then I'll allow the members to put their questions in too. But yeah, just just be you. I'm going to pick Come your on. brain. Come on, in. and I'll Come do in. my very best not to make fun of you. Oh, no, I would expect nothing less than you should. <laughs> These are some of the many things that go on in our club. Club Twit was created for people who didn't want to hear ads, but did want to support the network. $7 a month gets you ad-free versions of every show, including this one. You can also get access to the Discord, which is really a party 24-7. All kinds of topics, not just show topics. And then the members-only Twit Plus feed, which includes shows <clears throat> you can't get in any other way, like the Untitled Linux show and the mm -hmm. Giz Fizz and... Uh, of course, these uh, fireside chats, we have all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, all of that at Club Twit, which is twit.tv slash Club Twit if you want to join. We'd love to have you. Seven bucks a month. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. Here comes another member now. <laughs> <laughs> With just a small glass of wine. Another tribute. To don't say it. Lo I look like. Don't say he looks like me, please. <laughs> I can't no, keep he has changing. More hair. Yeah, yeah, I can't change my profile again. Uh, a Mr. Jeff Jarvis, of course, is the director of the Town Night Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark Craig Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Thank Blogs at BuzzMachine.com and Medium. It's great to have you, Jeff. And always a pleasure. Stacy Higginbotham, Stacy on IOT.com. Subscribe to her free newsletter. Check out her events and the podcast with Kevin Toffel, <clears throat> the IOT podcast. We were talking about Kevin mm -hmm. yesterday, or maybe it was Sunday. Oh, chat room, do you remember? Steam, was it Steam on the Chromebook? No, Kevin came up with a term. He was the first when he was at GigaOM to use a term that we all use now, and I can't remember what it was, but. Maybe it was on Mac break yesterday. I cannot remember. Oh, well. Uh, chat anyway, room, chat room I hope his ears are uh, burning because we were talking about him on the uh, show the other day. Thank you, Stacey. Thank y'all. I This went so fast, I didn't even have time to get hungry. So That's because Leo's butt is Thanks, killing Thanks, chair. <laughs> Thank the chair. 
Man, I wish we had that wide camera going most of the day. <laughs> it's been so funny just watching you. Guys. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. We do uh, this week in Google every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. You can watch us do it live at twit.tv slash live. Chat live at irc.twit.tv. After the fact, you can get all of our shows at the website, twit.tv. In the case of this show, it's twit.tv slash twig. There's also a dedicated YouTube channel to This Week in Google. And you can also subscribe on your favorite podcast client and get it automatically. Please do us a solid and give us a five-star a review. Mm -hmm. Spread the word about mm -hmm. the goodness that is Twig. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Wow, does my butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, on This Week in Google. Bye-bye! Ow! Don't miss All About Android. Every week we talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer -y goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, All About Android on twit.tv. Thank you.